live which works out great for the people who don't watch the lives they watch afterwards because it's up there <laughs> but but if you look forward to the streaming sessions i know it's easier to catch them when i like post a, at least a few hours in advance to let you guys know about it but it just be like that sometimes so and it's what it is anyways um so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna show you guys what I did to this doll. Firstly of all, I got to give a huge, giant, monumental shout out to my homegirl, Janine. Janine has like seven different usernames all over different social media. But if you're following her on Instagram, go to her page. It's at totally, spelled the way totally is spelled, Jazzy, J-A-Z-Z-I-E. That's what she uh, posts all her doll content on. So go over there and follow her. She's got pictures up there that she posted. It's a new account. It's a baby account. So she's still working on it. But you don't want to miss um, communicating with her because she's so smart, you guys. She's so smart. So me and her were texting. And I was telling her how frustrated I was trying to make a freaking wig for this head right here, this doll. And this is the kit sculpt by the Barbie Looks series. And she's model number three from the first um, wave. And of course, her face is beautiful, hi Mini G, but her hair just is so not interesting to me. Like, I can't style it, I can't do anything with this hair. So I got really um, frustrated because I was like trying to figure out how to elongate her hair, but y'all already know how I do. I'm way too lazy to root an entire head. I don't got time for it. <laughs> and my wig making efforts were getting very, just a hot mess. Like, I couldn't get the wig the way I wanted it to be, right? And something Janine had pointed out to me was, even if you finish the wig, you're always going to have that little millimeter of space between the scalp and the hair. So it's not going to look natural any way you do it with the wig. And I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. So we was brainstorming. So she comes up with this brilliant idea. And she's like, why don't you just do it like this? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that is amazing. I so need to try it, right? So last night I tried it. These are the results of the method that she showed me that I that I should do. Or I shouldn't say she showed me, but she suggested it to me. And I was like, girl, if this works, I got to got to give you credit because uh I wouldn't have even thought to do it unless you had suggested it to me. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did. It's real simple, you guys. And I'm saying it's simple because like if I'm saying it's simple, you know it's simple because I'm I just don't like to do extra extra work with my dolls. So basically what I did was I fused both ideas, though the method I was using to make my wigs and the rooting technique that I was like, I'm not trying to do this to a whole darn head. We just fused them together. And what we did was we created a style where it's versatile and she can style her hair. Right now it's parted off to the side, but actually this this hair, the way that it's rooted, doesn't have any part at all. So I can move the part around as I need to. And um, she can pull her hair into ponytail and do different st styles. But all I did was we did half the hair rooted and half the hair glued. And you'll see here in the back, all this hair here is glued in. I know it's kind of hard to see because my camera never likes to focus when I have faces in the way. So we're going to see if we can... Maybe we can move some of these dolls out the way so it's not trying to focus on their faces, maybe? Maybe that will help. You turn around. Don't look at us, okay? <laughs> That's ghetto. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let me show you, show you guys what we did. So, um, first of all, of course, I stripped all the hair off of this doll's head initially, pulled all the hair out, and she does have flocking that goes around, so I had to use acetone to get all the flocking off, and I did. The paint that they use to color the scalp with here, this paint is much stronger, if that makes sense, than the paint that's underneath here, underneath the hair, the scalp hair. This, if you put acetone on it, the paint will just come off real easily, but even though I rubbed acetone into the parts here, the flocking came off, but the coloring didn't go anywhere so i didn't really want the color to go anywhere so i just left it like that but i'm just letting you know in case you're one of those people that wants to like strip the head completely and then start over again and paint your own base color then keep that in mind okay so all we did was i just took patches of hair and that i clipped off of another doll and then i made 
I guess you can call them little wefts, but they're they're not really wefts, but I guess that's the closest thing you can think of to like kind of explain what they were. But you just snip off a piece of hair, right? And then you put glue on like regular Elmer's glue on the top end of the hair so that all the hair will stick together so it's nice and flat, right? And you can handle the hair instead of having just strands of hair flying all over the place. So you'll see right here, there's a little patch here. And that's a weft of hair that I glued down. So this part here, there's another layer of hair on top, right? And you just keep on going, just like if you guys know anything about gluing and weave, right? It's the exact same concept. So if you need a visual, go and watch a tutorial of girls gluing in extensions in their hair. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So... It's the same concept and just on her bald scalp, I just glued the pieces, right, that I wanted to go in there. But before I glued the pieces, what I first did was root half of her head. So the part of her hair that was this hair that's rooted in here, the short hair, I just rooted in longer hair where I wanted um, the hairline to be. I rooted all the way, so thick. There's, a, there's already holes in the doll's head, obviously, because she's got hair rooted into her head already. And I just rooted the hair all the way in to about this point here where it's, um, I guess, I don't know, like the middle of her head. And then I also rooted here on the edges going down and here on these edges going down. Just one row. But this part here in the middle is actually fully rooted. So that way... She can part her hair in whatever directions I need the part to go. She can tie her hair up in ponytails. I can actually gather all this hair up here in the middle to do like a half up ponytail style. Um, because all this hair is rooted here. And it's moving with the doll, doll's scalp. You know you know what I'm trying to say. And here on the edges, all this hair is rooted as well. So it's going to be able to be styled and pulled up into ponytails. And hide the hair that has the glued in spots, right? The glue, once it dries, it dries clear, so you, for the most part, should not be able to see it. But because we have so much of this part at the top rooted in, I don't know if you guys can see it, hold on. This part on the top is rooted, so it's covering the very last layer of hair that's glued. See, like here, if I lift this hair, it's not going to go like this. It's just going to, see, it's just going to stay down for most of the the rooted part here in the in the top that's close to the root of her head because this like half an inch is glued down flat so um it's covering it's covering the hair with the hair on the top and when you first root it the hair is sticking out all over the place so i basically the way that i got the hair to settle was i tied it with a hair band i, I wrapped it around her head and then I didn't wet her hair. What I did was I put the whole doll's head inside of a plastic bag. And then I dropped the plastic bag into hot, boiling hot water. And I let it just sit in there for like maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. Just until the water started to cool off. Then when you remove the doll out of the bag, her hair is not wet because the bag is protecting it. But the heat from the water has had enough of a, a time to like set the hair basically in the direction that you need it to lay so if you want it to be flat against her head or if you want it to have a, a middle part or in this case a side part then you can do that by using the heat to set the hair and it's not going to make the the glue come undone and everything gets all messed up i didn't have to worry about any of that so in my in my vision i felt like you know i liked the aesthetic of this doll but at the same time I just felt like something about the way she looks, she just looks like she would be a lot more believable with longer hair. And I just wanted to see what that would look like on this doll. So I had to try it. I was thinking about actually giving her red hair too. But for just for the sake of this experiment, I wanted to try it with just neat, you know, um, seamless hair. And this was the neatest hair that I could find in my stash of, you know, doll parts that I could use to do this with. So the hair that I used for this is actually this hair. 
um, it's originally hair that comes on one of these dolls. And I happen to have a floating head because I used her body for a donor. So, and I already have two of these dolls out on display. So I didn't need that head. So I just started snipping off hair from that doll. And now she's bald. But I can give her more hair by doing the same method and changing up the hair color or the hairstyle for that head if I decide I want to do that. But I just thought this would be a cool experiment to try. And when Janine suggested this to me, I was like, literally, like, in an instant, I was like, oh my gosh, that's going to take so much pressure off of me because I hate rooting doll hair. Like, it takes so long for me. I don't have the patience. I don't want to do that. But it's the most seamless way to do doll hair and if, if for it to actually look good and, like, do what you need it to do. And then with the with the gluing method, even though the gluing is easier, when you get closer and closer to the top and the front, like the hairline of the doll, the gluing method is like, bruh, you got to be like a magician to hide the glue when you're looking at the doll up close. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that just wasn't an option to glue the hair directly onto the doll's head if that meant I had to do it for the whole entire head. So this method kind of fused the two together and it made it so that at least from the front, you cannot tell that the doll has glued in hair and the hair is behaving like it's rooted in. It's, it's like I can brush the hair, you know what I'm saying? And then also from the back, you can, you can take pictures of the doll from the back and videotape them from the back and it's not gonna look like they have glued in hair. You feel me? So this method just worked really good i'm really excited to try this with other hair textures and colors because i have a couple of dolls that i kind of look at them like they're incomplete dolls even though i love their faces i just i can't bring myself to put them on display because i don't like their hairstyles or the hair length it's just something about the hair ain't right and i need to get it together first so i just have them collecting dust pretty much because i don't really know if what i want to do with them um this doll, honestly, she's not the main head that I have on this body. She's not the head that I prefer to keep out on display. Um, right now, it's this this version of the head. But I have, I want to say I have a, a different one that isn't even out of the box that I consider, like, the head I like the most. Because you know how all the heads are slightly different? The way that they do the makeup is a little bit different or, like... The symmetry of the facial features are a little bit different. So I'll compare all of them to see which one I like the best. And that's the one that I consider the main doll that's in my collection. Even though I might have duplicates of them. Um, so this was really just my experimental head. But I like it a lot. I think I'm just going to keep this head on her for the time being. Unless I decide to pull out the the head that I haven't deboxed yet and then like do something different with the hair on that doll because I just can't I can't do this I can't keep her out on display like this anymore like it's just irking me <laughs> and my OCD is eating me alive like I just can't do it and I want to pose this doll I want to put her on display I want to see her next to the other dolls you know I want her to have a spot on my main display because I do like her but guys her hair was just stressing me out so much so I'm glad that I tried this and it worked out really good. It didn't take me that long to do. The most painstaking part of this, honestly, is the rooting itself. But you don't have to use any specific rooting method. Whatever rooting method you like, I would say just use that method. You don't even have to root as far back as I did and this would probably work just great. Crossing season, this is Janine, you guys. And Janine is the one that that basically inspired this um this whole thing so make sure you guys are following her over on instagram like i said her instagram account is totally at totally jazzy j-a-z-z-i-e and make sure you're following her but like um you can i mean you can pretty much do whatever you want with this hair you can put her in pigtails you can do like a high ponytail even because the way that i i glued the hair on the bottom see when you pull the hair up i made sure that it was glued in such a way that you can pull the hair up and it's not going to show that there's glue or that it's not rooted and there's spaces you know what i'm saying i don't know if i'm explaining this good enough but do you understand what i'm saying you guys kind of like almost like a lace front wig the way that it behaves that's how i did the edges so that way you can style the hair almost any way you want and you don't have to be restricted and all I used was Elmer's glue. 
<laughs> I didn't use any special glue. I didn't use a hot glue gun because I felt like it was going to be too hard to control the heat. And the glue itself is a little bit thick. So even if you like try to press it into the scalp, you're just taking a risk that you're going to end up with some um, lift in the hair once it's dry with just a glue gun glue, I feel like. So that's why I didn't use that glue. Another reason I didn't use the glue gun glue is because it dries kind of white if you're not careful. And I didn't want there to be a bunch of white flakes just flying all over the place. So for me, I found it easier to just root the hair in first to get the hairline the way that I wanted. And because I'm pulling the hair, you know, through the head and all of that stuff. So it's just easier when you don't already have hair in the head when you're trying to root it. And then... Um, the rest of it after I had already rooted the parts I wanted rooted then I put the the glued in parts in and I just separated the hair so that they wouldn't get mixed up with each other that's all I did as I was doing it I was thinking like you could even do this with dolls where you don't need to do a full reroute necessarily for example I don't suggest you do this with this doll but I'm just using her as an example let's say I love this hair but I, I want her to have you know different colored hair on the bottom so I would remove half the hair from the back and then add in a different colored hair on the bottom by just gluing it and leaving this part rooted so it just looks like the whole thing is rooted and I don't have to go through all the hassle of rooting I would also suggest you could use this um, same method if you want to just add in color like you like for like something like this you want to add in a couple of strands of color you can glue little teeny tiny pieces to the tips of the hair close to the roots inside the hair like you know just part the doll's hair in between and do it in different random spots um just a teeny tiny little dab of glue will do when it's like almost dry then just stick it on there with like tweezers and you're gonna have to use little tools because your fingers are too big they're gonna get in the way you're gonna mess things up they're gonna just be gross looking but if you use toothpicks and tweezers and little you know things that you can um handle these little small parts with and that's going to be a lot easier for you to control everything so that's just my suggestion and i feel like you could also use this method if you have dolls like this one that has already rooted hair but maybe you want it's only partially rooted and you want more hair on the doll's head even if you don't want to change the color or even the length, you just want to blend it with whatever hair they already have on their head, this may be a method that will work as long as you can cover up the tracks. The, the tracks. You can cover up the, the parts that are glued, um, like you're covering up tracks. That's why I keep comparing it to actually gluing in weave to your real hair. Like, go and watch some tutorials of girls doing this. They're all over YouTube, you guys. It's all over the place and you're just scaling it down to doll size that's it it's not anything like it's not brain surgery it's very simple do you know what i'm saying so if you're unfamiliar with it and you need like a bigger head demonstration so you can really get the the gist of what i'm saying that's why i'm suggesting to watch some videos of women gluing in weave hair to their hair and then you'll see what we're, we're talking about it's the exact same method so it worked for me. I'm so glad that it worked because now I feel a lot less stressed out about my other dolls that I want to do this with that I've been like nervous about, you know, doing their hair. Mind you, because you're gluing in hair, some of the hair will shed. Some of the hair is going to come out and that's just part of the deal. It's not a big deal. It's okay. And over time, as you're brushing the hair and doing different things to it, if you're messing around with the hair a lot, you're taking the risk that it is going to start to shed over time. But it's not going to shed so much that you're just going to have a bunch of bald spots. Like, you know what I'm saying, guys? And you definitely want to work with um, hair that you have enough of to actually give the doll a full, you know, head of hair. You don't want to be sparsely <laughs> gluing in hair because you only got a couple strands to work with in the first place. For her, it took one whole head of hair from one of those dolls. And like a small row of hair from another one that I needed to fill in some gaps. But that's really only because initially I had used this hair to make a wig with. And a lot of that hair, I lost strands while I was trying to glue the hair onto the wig cap. So I'm cutting it off of that to put onto this doll's head now. And it was just too many transfers basically. So I probably would have been fine with just one doll's um, head of hair. But that's how I sourced the hair. And I'm only telling you guys about this because sometimes we think we have to go and buy brand new doll hair from someplace. 
Man, if I look through my stash of dolls that whose heads I just pop off so I can use their bodies as donors, I have so many just floating heads that are just going to waste because I don't really do anything with the heads once I don't need the bodies anymore. So I'll either hybrid those dolls, dress them up, and sell them on eBay, or I keep those parts because I might end up using them for something like, for instance, their hair. And that's what I do. So I'm just sharing that with you guys in case you're like, where am I going to get doll hair from? Well, there's doll hair right in your doll stash. <laughs> you know, um, another way, too, is also you can source hair from dolls that have extremely long hair that doesn't need that much length on the doll's head. So even if you don't want to just go and take all the hair off of a totally fine doll's head, um, for example, I have a doll that is, what is she called? Rainbow something doll. I don't know. She's She's got like really, really long black hair, but she also has rainbow colors in her hair, which I love. But it's so long. It's like all the way down to her like ankles, right? She don't need hair that long. So if I wanted to cut her hair down the line, what I would do is I would snip off whatever length I want to, you know, snip off. And then turn those lengths into wefts so that I can glue them onto another doll's head down the line if I decide I want to do something like that. But it's that's just a way for you to recycle hair without having to like go and buy hair from some place or something like that. Just some ideas. It may not even be a Barbie doll. Maybe you've got some other kind of doll laying around that's got hair that you can afford to snip off and you're not going to miss it because you're not really doing anything with that doll. So those are just some ideas for you guys on how you can source hair and use this method and um hold on let me read your comments i definitely need to try this method for my kit which glue did you use i just used regular um regular elmer's glue like school glue and then i used a, a paintbrush to control how much glue i was using at a time i just dipped it into the container and the paintbrush was how I was controlling the amounts that I was using. And then to keep my um, paintbrush from drying out in between, I would just dip it in some water. Like when I wasn't using it, I would just keep the, the paintbrush inside of a cup of water. And I would just dry it off and then go and get the next bit that I needed. So that's all that I did. It was so simple. I literally just did this last night when I was like up watching TV. And that's another thing too why I hate rooting is because I like multitasking when I'm doing things that are kind of like boring and mundane with my dolls. So I'll have my dolls out that I need to work on and then I'll be like either watching something or um, listening to something while I'm doing that. And I just I can't do that when I'm rooting doll hair because you have to pay such close attention to what you're doing. And the rooting method that I use it, it's similar to the method I normally use. Hi, Blake. But um, for this one, this is what I like to do, okay? I like to I like for the needle to go through the doll's head from the outside in. But a lot of times when you're just using like a regular sewing needle to root hair, you have to do it from the inside out, if that makes sense. Because the hair is sealed from the inside part. But what I did was I made my wefts and then I rooted them from the outside in and I made it so that when I pulled the, the needle through, the knot that I had, the part that was like keeping the hair all together so that it doesn't come back out, I would force it through the hole from the inside, if that makes sense. I know it might sound confusing unless you like see what I'm talking about, but those of you who are familiar with rooting, you know what I'm talking about. So that just to me is a lot easier because I can see exactly what hole it's going into whereas when I do it the opposite way I have to hope that the needle's going to come out of the hole that I wanted to come out of and it's just too much maneuvering too much manhandling and I've poked myself a couple of times doing it like that and I have to keep to I feel like I have to keep heating the head up so that it's very very soft in order for me to work with the head that way it's just not as much control as what I would like so I don't I can't do it like that um, hi, oh, Blake said I was going to watch later, but it's better live. Do you think so? Well, I guess because you guys interact when we're doing it live. Like, you're not just like a quiet bystander that's just watching the show and then eating popcorn. Like, y'all be chiming in, telling me your thoughts and your ideas and asking questions. So, for the interactive people, I feel like, yeah, it's probably better to just do the stream live. But that's, 
That's why this is a good method for me because it gives us the opportunity to actually interact with each other while also giving people an opportunity if they miss it to see what we were talking about later and just, you know, skim through and, and get what they need to get out of the video. So even the people who watched live, sometimes they'll come in towards the end of the video so they missed all the discussion in the beginning. Sometimes they can only stay in the beginning and then they have to leave early. So doing it like this, I think, kind of gives everybody everything they need and... Me personally, does it sound crazy, you guys? <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you, okay? <sighs> so, this is what I do when I, when I do the lives, right? I Because nothing is scripted, and other than the topic that we're discussing, for the most part, I don't even know what I'm going to be saying until after I already started talking. So, what I'll do is, after the show, I will... You know, it has to render or whatever, and then it'll post as a public video. The same night, I'll let it play, and then I'll just kind of watch it to fall asleep to. Because for some reason, listening to myself talk makes me sleepy. <laughs> and I have horrible insomnia, so I'm going to take what I could get. Like, whatever methods I can use <laughs> to help me go to sleep, that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm giving her a fake, a faux piercing. This is her little eyebrow piercing that I'm giving her. And I'm trying to decide if she needs a nose ring or not. I don't know. Well, let's see. Maybe I'll hate it and then I'll take it away. That's the great thing about this method that I'm using for the piercings. Because if you don't like it, you can just scrape it off and then start from scratch or just leave it alone. You don't have to have anything there. So, kind of don't have no reason to not try it because there's nothing to lose. You know, I mean, unless you spill paint all over your doll, which is not a good idea, but I mean, it is what it is. I think I'm going to paint her nails because she doesn't have her nails painted. I think I didn't end up doing anything to this doll when I was trying to customize some of my other dolls and I gave them um, painted nails. Wait, why am I using the acrylic paint when I can just use puffy paint? I really prefer the puffy paint over the acrylic paints right now when it comes to... Um, fake fingernails and piercings because it makes it it's like 3d when it dries so it looks more realistic it more looks like to me it looks more like when you go to the nail salon and get your nails done and you get those uh what do you call them the acrylic nails it's kind of reminds me of those when they dry you know they're just just puffy enough that they come away from the doll's fingertips and it and it gives it some texture some dimension so it looks like they actually have nails but not so much that it's like dripping and drooping all over the place because it's not watery so that's just what I like to use but the acrylic method works it looks just more flat it looks more like nail polish that you do at home like my messy nails <laughs> I can't pamper myself so I'd rather just pamper my dolls like don't be mad at me okay yeah you know I'm saying I do go to the nail salon once in a blue moon, but I'm just lazy. It's like too much hassle. I don't want to go through the process of making an appointment or even just walking in. And then I have to tell the Vietnamese ladies what I want. And they talk so fast and they're very aggressive sometimes. And they be trying to tell me what I should get. And I'm like, uh, hold up. Let me think. I'm trying to figure out what I want. And they be like, you want? You want gel nail? You want gel nail? Get gel nail. Gel nail good for your fingernail. And I'm like, uh, maybe I don't want gel nails right now. Maybe I want something else, damn it. Let me think. And they just won't let me think. And then I get frustrated. Then I have anxiety. And then I have to make a quick decision. And then I can't ever figure out what color I want. Ugh, so much hassle. <laughs> it's like I have to commit to this nail color for I don't even know how long, as long as they're going to last. Like, really? Can I? Just please. I need to figure out what's going on with my with my outfits for the next three weeks. Thank you. <laughs> I can't answer these questions right now. It's just too much. That's all. I don't have a problem with the nail salon. It's just like, ugh, I need to think. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't occur to me when I go to nail shops that maybe I should have put some thought into this before I come here. Because it's always impromptu, like my, my, my lives. Like, I never have it planned. I don't know a week in advance that I'm going to go get my nails done. It'll be like three hours before. And I'll say, oh, my nails look jacked up. And then Adonis will be like, we'll go to the nail salon then. Here, here's some money, go. And I'll be like, huh? What? Right now? <laughs> well, you got something better to do? Er, uh, no, I do not. <laughs> so, just go do it. And then I'm stuck there. 
looking crazy trying to tell the Vietnamese ladies what I want. Um, let's see. Blake said, oh my gosh, I hate rerouting. I would much rather pay somebody to do it. I happily pay for that service. Yes, amen, brother, because I feel the same way, okay? <laughs> I feel the same way. And I'd be collecting my doll heads because I'm like, I'm going to send these off to go get rooted. But then by the time I'd be ready to do that, whoever it is that I was thinking about doing that with might not be available. And it's just like, ugh, and I got to wait longer. I don't know what's going on. You know, because I'm just lazy. I don't want to root. Um, Temperance said, you did a great job. She looks wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, Shauna Joshua said, Greetings, do you use metal thimbles while rerouting? The ones that I have are actually kind of rubbery feeling, and I put one on this finger and one on my thumb to pull the needle through because it's very difficult, and the needle that I'm working with is like crazy long. It's like freaking long as hell, and I mostly used my big long needle um, to do this, but I also have a couple of skinny needles that I, I used around the edges of the head, like... This first row of hair here that's going around her actual, like, uh, hairline, I used my skinny needle for because the, the holes there seem so tiny and I didn't want to poke giant holes in them because um, they weren't already big holes. But then the layer after that I used my bigger needle on and it blended just fine. And I actually skipped a few holes here and there, but because I put a decent amount of hair into each hole, it was fine. It just filled the whole space in and it looked fine when I was um, done. I love the eyebrow piercing. Paint is definitely a safer method than messing around with needles and metals. Yeah, and I can't I can't take those kind of chances on some of my dolls because some of them I only have one of. And if I mess their faces up or do any kind of permanent damage that I can't undo later, I know I'm going to regret it and be so upset. So... I, I had to figure out a different way to do that. And I'm not I'm surprised more people don't do it that way because these things are so easy to get a hold of. You can probably order them online for dirt cheap or even get like a pack that has a whole bunch of different colors in it. Um, that might save you a little bit more money if you buy them in bulk. So they're not hard to get a hold of and you don't have to have any special tools to use them on your dolls. Minnie G said this would be great with a partial wig. This uh, well, with a partial wig cap for a doll that you want to keep the hairline. Yeah, well, if you if you can figure out a way to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm, I guess modify this technique, whatever way it's gonna suit your needs. I think it's a good way to do it. And like I said, with the hairline, like the hairline is the most visible part of the doll's hair when you're looking at them straight on. So you need the hairline to be on point, you know what I'm saying? And also directional rooting is definitely a thing. Like if you root the hair with the needle pointed in a certain direction when you make the hole, the hair is not going to sit necessarily a certain way unless you like really manipulate it so that's something to also keep in mind and if you have the patience to root all the way around the head then that will probably make it look a lot better than what I've done but like I said I'm not planning on styling her hair a whole bunch of different ways I honestly don't even know if I want to keep it this long to to be totally like keeping it real I I don't know I I still don't know if I want to keep it this long because she's a petite doll she's very short compared to my other dolls and it, this might just be a little too much length for her but I mean I don't even know if I could say that because I have another petite doll that's part of this line as well the Tamika sculpt with the burgundy hair and her hair is even longer than this and she I'm I like her just fine with her hair long um all the curls dropped out of mine I gotta recurl her hair but this is the one that I have and she's still on her original body so they're both petite size dolls but look how much hair she's got she's got so much hair it's very long and i don't mind the way that it looks especially when it's curled properly right now I brushed all her curls out so it's not you can't even see how she's supposed to look with the curls but i gave her some really really good curls with tiny little straws i didn't use regular straws i used those you know those real skinny straws that they have for um coffee stirrers i guess is that what they're called they're like the little skinny black straws. I use those to curl this one's hair and they came out real, real nice spiral ringlets that were very tight. And she don't want to stand up because she ain't got no shoes on. 
fine. If you want to just keep sliding all over the place, do you, homie. <laughs> but anyway, but her hair is much, much longer than this doll's hair is right now. So I'm, I'm going to have to play around with her to see what look is best for her. I don't want to snip too much off if I do end up cutting some of the length because... I just want to explore how she looks with the longer hair. I just felt like that's the way that she should have came from Mattel in the first place. But they were trying to be edgy and switch things up and surprise us with this pixie cut on this little Asian looking face. Which was very brand new, you know. So I'm not hating on it. But just for me and my collection, that just that look is not working for her. So... <laughs> I just I couldn't figure out how to dress the doll like she just looked so out of place and everything I would put her in her I don't know she just didn't look right and then I'm also debating whether or not I want to do some touch-ups to the doll's face itself like do I want to repaint the face because this sculpt is so cute and <sighs> y'all y'all I be stalking the interwebs okay and every time I come across a picture of somebody's repaint of this kit doll I'd be falling in love with the sculpt more and more it which is kind of messed up because <laughs> think if you think about it I'm sitting here going I like the sculpt more when I see how it looks not the way Mattel made it like then I'm like yeah she's awesome so I don't know I don't know if it's a compliment or this but I'm just saying this sculpt has a lot of potential and I want to see what else it can do so I'm thinking about possibly at least one version of it of repainting it maybe but that's just i just i don't have the patience right now to do a full repaint either so we'll see but i'm enjoying her like this with the longer hair because it's a lot more fun to handle the doll um and when i style her hair a little bit more i don't know if i'm gonna maybe curl it or something but the more I style it and play around with it, you know, I'll get an idea of the kind of look I want to go for with her. And then I'll be sure to post pictures here and over on Instagram so you guys can see what kind of styles we can do with glued on hair. And I just, this is a very, man, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> why didn't I think of this before? <laughs> This is why you have to have friends. This is why you have to bounce ideas back and forth between other like-minded people. Because when you brainstorm, you come up with solutions. Let's see. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any good comments. Temperance said, I use a water-soluble paint, which makes it easier to clean off, but can still run the risk of staining. Uh-oh. Um, and then Janine said, sometimes I use nail polish, too, for fake piercings. Yeah, I do that, too. And I also use real nail polish for nail polish on my doll sometimes, depending on, like, what color it is, whether or not it's going to show up good on the vinyl. Um, Kit actually looks so much better with longer hair. What did you do about the flocking? So the flocking, as you can see, is all around the doll's scalp where it's not rooted and i had to use i just used a q-tip with uh acetone on it and just rubbed it off and underneath this flocking she's got brown paint all like the whole hairline is colored in brown which actually made it very very easy for me to know where to actually put the wefts of hair that i was gluing on because i just followed the direction of the pattern that was already painted there and that's a lot easier than me trying to draw my own pattern in or paint it myself but it's not hard to do it's just less hassle because that's an extra step that I don't have to worry about doing so even though I used the acetone to get the flocking off it didn't get rid of the the brown paint that was underneath the flocking hi Tevin um no you're not late you're not late we're 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 oh, hold on what Oh, go ahead and repaint her. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> I'll be ready to, and then I'll be like, but what if I mess it up, though? <laughs> so I'll wait. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm going to do it next time. I'm going to do it next time. But I have so many of these heads that I can afford to mess it up and then do it over and over and over again until I get the right look that I want. And also, you guys, the, the sculpt is like 80% of the work, to be honest. When you're repainting, it's much harder to repaint on a very, very flat surface, for one. And for a, a sculpt that doesn't have a lot of detail in it, 
but if you have a very detailed sculpt that you're working with to begin with where like the the lip lines are very defined the eye sockets are very defined where the eyebrows are supposed to go is very clear it's so much easier to draw on those faces as opposed to just like any random sculpt you know so that's part of it um the new hot wheel snickers and skateboard packs are worth work with ken fresh squad and world peacekeepers can't wait to buy more they're only 297 where are they 297 at hmm tevin where are they 297 at <laughs> he says sorry they don't fit the peacekeepers but luckily they work with ken and the fresh squad i've been stalking walmart.com trying to find these fresh squad boy dolls and brah <laughs> Every time I see one, it'll say add to cart. I add it to my cart. Then when I go to check it out, it says, oh, sorry, item in your cart is unavailable. And I'll be like, why would you give me the option of putting it in a cart just to be like, sorry, it's unavailable. I don't think it's because when I put it into the cart, other people are buying them up and they're just selling out in two seconds. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. They trying to trick me. That's what they trying to do. Have you tried hot glue as nail extensions? I haven't, although I know that there's a way that you can use hot glue for um, nail extensions for your Barbies. But I haven't done that yet because I have this thing where I refuse to turn on my hot glue gun unless I have, like, more than one project to do <laughs> that requires the hot glue gun. Unless, of course, I'm building. But... If I'm not building, if I'm just doing like some kind of custom work where I'm just gluing something together, I need to have multiple things that I need this the darn thing on for because it heats up and then it's like, I don't know, it's just a, such a hassle dealing with the hot glue gun in the space that I'm working in because I have such limited space in here that I don't like to pull out all these different gadgets and, and goozits and equipment i don't like to do that it just makes too much of a mess and i get frustrated and then i just don't want to do anything at all so that's the only reason why i haven't tried the glue gun extensions yet but i do plan on doing that um i think that it'll, it'll be fun but just like myself you know a lot of my dolls even with using the the paints the puffy paints as extensions for their nails the, i don't like for them to be that long because to me like, even in real life, it's not practical to have nails that are so long that you can barely do anything in them. So, that's why I don't really do that. Because um, I don't have... It's not a necessity for their nails to be super duper long. The aesthetic of it is fun, I guess. But in my mind, my dolls are just everyday regular people that are doing everyday regular things. And they're not supermodels. They're not princesses. They're not fairies. They're not mermaids. They're not some kind of creature that doesn't exist for real in real life like they're just regular people so <laughs> to me it's not it's not it wouldn't seem practical for them to have super long nails because regular people don't walk around with super long nails unless they're just real fashionable and they don't really got no reason to not have nails if that makes sense like if you work and you have to do everyday things you're not really walking around with nails that look like claws that are like super duper long and just filled with all these different designs you know and i feel like if i'm gonna have nails that long they better have some fly design on them because why are they so long for if there's no other reason <laughs> i just want people to look at them you know so if there was a way for me to do that and then have like the long nail extensions for the dolls and then somehow i could make teeny tiny tiny little um designs on them then i think that would be more motivation for me to turn on my glue gun just to do that but until I figure that out, I don't know. I'm just going to stick to the puffy paints for now. Um, they're fun when you layer the puffy paints too. Like if one layer dries and then you go over it again with another layer, it makes the nails more fuller and like longer. So it's, you know, it's a process, but it's fun. It's not like arduous. Like it's not like a, because the puffy paints, they're very easy to control. They don't, they dry fast enough that it doesn't take forever, but it doesn't take so long that you're like, Oh my God, when is this thing going to be dry already? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just did her nails on camera with you guys, and they're already dry. I can touch them. They're not going to smear. You know, they're fine. And then I can go back over them if I want to change the color or if I want to make them a little thicker or longer. So I'm fine with it being like that. Um, let me see what else I'm missing here. Okay, so Janine said, I mean, a full repaint. 
so I can't just do like a <laughs> half ass repaint job. See this pressure you putting on me? Oh my god. <laughs> Zenaida said, I love this one. I bought this doll not long ago. I want to change her. I love the face, but too short hair. I felt exactly the same way. And this face is so cute that I just felt like I got to do something with her. I got to be able to dress her and pose her and have her alongside her little dolly friends so they can hang out. And she's just missing out on all the fun because she don't fit in with the rest of the group. Because it's just her hair is just too... What's the word I'm looking for? It's not the style. It's not that there's something wrong with the style. It's that it's not... It's not that versatile, you know? You know what I'm saying? It's not that versatile. And I feel like for her to... You know, certain looks... Like, when you're wearing, like, jeans and a t-shirt, your hair is not gonna be all fancy looking. You're just gonna have it in, like, a little ponytail or something simple, right? But if you're wearing, like, an elegant dress then maybe you would have a cute little updo or some braids or like you're going to do something fancier to your hair, have different kind of accessories in your hair. I like the option of being able to do all of that. You feel me? Like I want to be able to choose between just looking like I'm just going out to the corner store versus I'm going to the club tonight. Like I want to be able to show these dolls in different facets because like in my head they're just regular people like me and you who would be doing that and we switch up our looks depending on what we're doing right so that's part of the reason why i was like i gotta reroute this doll i gotta do something with her because it was just driving me nuts looking at that same hairstyle all the time and she just doesn't look like the kind of person that would always have the same hairstyle every single day um tevin said i bought the skateboard sneaker packs at walmart what is that what do you mean skateboard sneaker packs are they, are they for Barbie dolls? Hazik, hi. Said rerouting doll is not easy, but I like it. It took me six hours. Woo! Yeah, that's why that's why we came up with this method. Because for us lazy folks who don't got all this time to and <laughs> devotion to put into <laughs> rooting hair, um, for those of you who are jumping in here a little bit late, what I showed everybody earlier was that half of the hair on her head is actually glued in. So. Here you'll see the very last layer that I did with glue. And underneath, all this hair on the bottom here, it's all glued to the scalp. And then I glued it in such a way that we can do an updo like this if I want to do a high ponytail. And it's not going to mess up the hair or come apart or fall off. So the hair can be styled in many different ways. And then this top part, the middle part of the hair, um, and the front is rooted and I just followed the lines, the, the holes that were already in the doll's hair, where partially it is rooted, to make sure that I was, you know, doing the right portion of her head. So that way, it can style, it can be styled in different ways without looking like it's glued in hair. It's just as thick as it would be if it was all rooted in. And this is a full head of hair that's on her head. So it's really versatile and it's an easier way for me to... Um, root the doll's head without having to root the whole entire head because I just don't have the patience for it. Now, this is not something I would suggest that you do with every doll you want to reroot. It really depends on that doll and the role that the doll is playing in your um, collection, of course. Like, if you if it's like your grail doll <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with the doll, you just want to switch the hair up, I don't suggest doing this because if the hair doesn't hold up like how you were thinking it should you might be disappointed with the results after you've glued hair onto the doll's scalp right whereas if you just root all of the hair in then it's permanent it's there you don't have to worry about anything shedding or f falling off or anything like that it's just it's in there you know so uh that's just my my suggestion but i mean who cares at the end of the day it's your doll do whatever you want with your dolls don't let me stop you right Tevin said, I think the Hot Wheels skate packs are exclusive to Walmart, but at least the sneakers fit something. It would have it would have been a waste if they didn't fit anything. What do they fit? I want to know. Um, Galaxy Doll said, I found the male fresh doll at my Walmart inside the store, right? And there's another thing. <laughs> Jenny and I were like, why don't we just go find some Walmarts in the hood? And that's probably where all they at because <laughs> we can't find them in our local areas. And I'm sitting here. I'm in Washington State, so I'm like, where is the hood around here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know of any if there is one. I think Tacoma is like the closest thing to the hood. 
I guess, like, people out here talk about Tacoma as if it's the hood. So I guess they think it's the hood. So if I can find a Walmart in that area, I'll have to go and venture and see what they have inside the stores. Tammy Barrow said the toothpick paint worked. I made her nails gold and lips. Ooh. Um, Bree Swan said, wow, I have no idea you were on live. Kit looks so different. I like it. Yeah, I apologize for not giving you guys more notice on my live stream tonight. But it was all impromptu. I wasn't even sure if I was going to have time to come on, to be honest. So I didn't want to be like, guys, see you guys in three hours. And then three hours goes by and I'm like, psych. <laughs> Never mind. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so this was the best that I could do on short notice. Um, Tevin said, I've sold three Fresh Squad Khalils. I just shipped two today. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, Galaxy said, girl, I got your Snow White reroute done and ready to be sent out. If you can DM me on IG, I can send her out this week. Oh my goodness. My heart is palpitating. <laughs> I'm so, I'm like scared to see her. Because I'm so excited to see her. I'm scared of my reaction when I see her. Because I know I'm going to like her so much. And I was just looking at some pictures of Snow White dolls the other day. And I was like, mm -hmm. one of these days, you're going to make it into my collection, little girl. Ha! <sighs> I'm very excited to see. Okay, so remind me on Instagram. If you don't hear from me first remind me on instagram because i get so sidetracked easily with a bunch of stuff that's going on that i've been forgetting i'll have a i'll like literally i'll tell adonis will be like can you bake me a plate with this and this on it and i'll be like mm -hmm, okay then i'll like see a notification look at the notification respond and then totally forget that he just asked me <laughs> to make him a plate right and then he'll be like yep so and i'll be like huh Oh, yeah, that's right. I was supposed to make a plate. I do this all the time. All the time. Um, Tevin said, next time I send you something, hopefully soon, it'll be a package with dolls you've been on the hunt for. Why y'all trying to give me heart attacks? Why are y'all trying to give me heart attacks on a live stream? What would y'all do if I passed out right now? Like, <laughs> how would you help me? <laughs> Good thing Adonis is sitting in this room next to me. He ain't paying me no mind because he got his headphones on, but if I pass out, then hopefully he'll notice. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, you sent me a, 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 didn't you send me a video of your dolly? I looked at it um, after you, um, you did some, some, some sprucing to your doll. She looks really good, too. Um, wait a minute, is your doll, is your doll already blonde or did you root her like that because i don't know if i've ever seen a blonde version of that sculpt tevin said i get paid on friday i will look then bro i really need to like i need to take a trip to where you live at because you be finding everything everything like any and everything that people have on their radar tevin is right up the street from him and it's on sale <laughs> he always finds that stuff Without fail, you guys, every single time that we've done a live stream that Tevin has been in, every single time, you guys, y'all know I'll be like random on here. He don't know when I'm coming on live. He just catches it when he catches it, right? Every single time, am I, am I lying? Don't he be like, yo, I just found this in my local area for dolls and it was on, on clearance. It was, it was on sale. Like, what? <laughs> Every single time, bro, I'm starting to wonder. Tevin, are you related to somebody that work at them stores? They giving you hookups. Just tell us now. We ain't gonna tell on you. Um. Oh, you messaged me saying that Snow White was ready? Oh my gosh, I totally missed that. I, I totally missed it. Well, good thing you told me. Because <laughs> I would have just been in La La Land for like the whole week. <laughs> totally not even realized. Oh my gosh. Now she's falling over. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Oh, did you guys... Oh, my goodness. All right. This is the Gloria Estefan doll. I gave her... I gave. I think I gave her a little piercing, too, on her eyebrows. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to do any other piercings for her. I mean, obviously, they're not real piercings, so there's no risk. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to give her any... And you know what else? I was also contemplating about her hair, right? About changing the texture of her hair but i don't know because 
people say that her hairstyle is very iconic and she's like known for her big curly hair which is true and then i was thinking if i get rid of the curls i can't really get the curls back unless i deliberately curl her hair so maybe i should just leave it alone for now i did dip it in some boiling hot water so it could be tamed so that the curls would be a little bit less you know messy but um i don't know i still don't know i don't know i don't want to regret it if i straighten the hair and then i'm like no the curls gotta come back but i really don't know don't be surprised though if you do see it straight because i just be doing stuff <laughs> i'll just get tired of a look and be like now nah, we gotta switch something up so don't be surprised but that's why i haven't done anything to her hair yet because i'm not sure if i want to change the texture just because of that alone but like i said in my collection she's not gloria she's claudia in my collection so you know what i mean but but we know it's the gloria estefan doll so it would be like if you had a brandy doll and her hair was all braided and then you're like, should I unravel these braids? And I'm like, well, no, because it's brandy. I mean, you want to just unravel the braids? You know what I'm saying? That's kind of how I feel about her right now. But it might just be because she's still new. We'll see. Uh, Tevin said, I don't call it luck. I just happen to look and see what I can find. I just got Barbie Extra 14 yesterday, and the hair's a big improvement, better than previous Barbie Extra dolls. Well, amen to that. That's a that's a relief. Um, Galaxy Doll said, yeah, I saw the male Fresh Squad in my stores. If you were like, I don't mind purchasing him for you. Man, y'all are seeing them in your stores? Why aren't they in my stores? I don't understand. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, crossing season says i'd be looking at tevin's ig feed <laughs> big mad at the sales i know right <laughs> gloria looks really cute with the curls i think she'll look plain jane without them that's a good point that's a good point i also thought about maybe braiding her hair up because it's just so big like i want to be able to like style it and do stuff with it and handle it but certain dolls of mine that have super big hair like in the first stages of having the doll i will like it but then after like a month or two i'll just get so tired of the hair just flying all over the place and like this one when i was just trying to like show you guys her hair and it was just getting caught in everything like oh it just drives me nuts so i'll end up either braiding the hair up i don't like to cut it if i if i don't have to i'll either braid it change the texture to tame it or sometimes i will um like curl it like you know do a proper boil curl set so that it's neater maybe i'll do that maybe i'll recurl her hair myself and see how that looks oh that sounds like it would be fun hmm <laughs> yeah maybe i'll do that let me think let me think let me think about this um hazik said it's your doll do whatever you want amen Bree said, at my Walmart, Khalil was on the bottom shelf, pushed back. Ugh, I'm not even surprised. And I'd be looking, too. I'd be looking all on the bottom. I'd be going around to the different aisles that don't even sell dolls <laughs> and toys. I'm like, are they hiding over here with the dinosaurs? So let me just see. <laughs> right? I'd be in there looking crazy. Um, I'd be crawling on the floor. <laughs> I know the people who work at Walmart, they must see me in there and just be like, what is this lady doing? Why is she, who lets her in here? <laughs> like i'm so shameless i don't care um it'd be kids next to me and i'll be like pushing them out the way so i can take pictures of stuff <laughs> on the shelves <laughs> like these kids don't know what they're looking at get out of here <laughs> barbies aren't for kids get away from us <laughs> oh my god that's a secret guys i'm telling you about doing now okay um Tevin said i recently locked one of my naturally says dolls with the flat iron i love it it's uh, it last her it's past her back oh really i gotta see that do you have some pictures posted of that i want to see um galaxy said i never like these extra dolls because of the awful hair quality they would just end up being in a pile of dolls i need to reroute Ooh. Ugh. but now with this method i don't feel so like annoyed about the idea of possibly doing something different with my barbie extras who's hair i can't stand because i could i'll just glue half of it in and then with them because they're not really dolls that i put on display that often i don't even think i would root as much as i did with this doll like i went pretty far back all the way here to the 
very like the middle what do you call this this is the crown the crown of your head i i rooted all the way back to here and like it's kind of like a v shape the hair that's rooted it's like you know like a little triangle here right imagine there's a triangle that whole triangle is rooted but with the barbie extra dolls i really would not be like sweating it if i maybe just did like this much maybe like three layers back of rooting just so that the hairline looks good and then i can put them into ponytails if i want and the rest of it can just be um glued in and i'm not gonna be bothered you know i don't know we'll see but it just saves so much time when you don't have to root the entire head i thought it was just me because i don't see anything but barbie nana not surprise lol omg dolls in every store in philadelphia i honestly don't understand it blake are you in philadelphia that's what's up my family's in philadelphia like my whole dad's side of the family like I want to say, goodness, I don't even know how many, but he's got a lot of family. I want to say like 50% of my cousins live in Philly or somewhere in Pennsylvania, close to Philly. Um, Tevin said the new Barbie Extra Dolls hair is way better than the original Barbie Extra Dolls. Jenny said I way, the way I'd be literally climbing the Walmart shelves. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Careful on them shelves, man. <laughs> you might have a lawsuit on your hands. Bree said at my store they were with the Naturalistas dolls. I haven't seen those in my store either. Maybe that's what it is. The The stores that would carry Khalil must also be the stores that would carry the Naturalistas in person. Maybe that's what I need to be looking for. I need to track down a Walmart that actually has Naturalistas dolls inside of them. And then stock of that Walmart. Daylight said, another live. I have no problem changing collector doll's hair. I'll be changing the hair on Maya Angelou. Ooh, keep one as is and change the others. Oh, that's a good idea. Yo, you know what? That's one of the um, inspiring women dolls I don't have is the Maya Angelou doll. But she was absolutely on my radar. She still is. I just spaced out whether or not I wanted to get her right away because there were other dolls that were more priority dolls for me that I wanted to make sure I didn't miss so I haven't gotten her yet but as long as her price is reasonable I don't mind adding her to my collection I do plan to eventually add her the thing I like about that doll other than of course she looks exactly like Maya Angelou she looks just like her you guys look at a, a old picture of her a picture of her when she was like in like her like 30s maybe that doll looks just like her for real for reals um they even got like the gap in her teeth it's crazy man she looks just like her but i the appeal of that doll to me is that she's she doesn't look like the same age group that a lot of the dolls that we normally see in modern day look i always am fascinated by the dolls that can pass for like middle-aged or older characters because we just don't have a whole lot of them they're as rare as the male dolls used to be, remember? Back in the day when it was like very hard to find a, a decent looking um Ken. So, dolls that are like that, that you can kind of pass for older characters, I love those. I like to have those in my stash, even though I don't always keep them out on display, I ain't gonna lie. I don't display those dolls that much. But when I want to do like stories, when I want to do... um things where I have dolls acting scenes out, things like that, for role playing purposes, I be needing them. I need characters that are all different age ranges. So, you know, like I have a, a bunch of little kid dolls too, but people never see them because I don't display them and I don't take a lot of pictures of them. But I do have them. And then when I come across ones that I really like, I'll get them. I just add them to my stash for when I have a need for them, then I'll pull them out. Um, let's see who else said something good. So Galaxy asking... Tevin, what number was the blue hair skipper sculpt with the cat ear headband? She was the recent one I bought. I really hate her hair quality. I have that one too, and I don't like her hair at all, which is so disappointing because I love Skipper. Like, I love the Skipper face sculpt. It's one of my favorite sculpts. And, and I also love her blue hair, even though I'm not a big fan of, like, crazy hair colors. But the blue hair worked on her. And I was very excited about that doll until I felt the hair texture. Uh, and I gave her a boil wash treatment, which helped a little bit. I think I straightened it with a straightening iron, too. It helped, but it's just not enough for me to want to, like, deal with the doll. <laughs> She's just hiding in my drawer. Um, I have other skippers that I feel like, I don't know, I want to deal with more than that doll that I keep out on display, but... 
I don't know. You know what else I got today? I got more shelves. You know those shelves that I use, you guys, way up here, way, way, way up there. Well, I had to, I had to order another pack so I can put them up on my other wall. Which, if I try to turn my camera, it's gonna disconnect my device from the charger. So that's probably not a good idea. But I have another wall um, adjacent to that one that's empty. So I'm gonna add another layer of shelves there so I can put more of my dolls because as you guys were seeing this display up here where some of these guys are hanging out that's what I call my main display and the problem with that display is because I have to layer dolls in front of each other I can't always see the faces of the dolls that are behind one another like this is my pet peeve right here if I have a doll displayed with more dolls behind it I need to see who's there like I need to see their faces even if I can't see their outfits or um, the, 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 the pose that they're in, it doesn't bother me as much when, until like, I can't see their, their face. If I can't see the face, I'll just be like, I don't know. I told you I'm a face collector. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not exaggerating. I'm really a face collector and I got to see their faces. So I ordered another pack of those. They cost me about 27 ish dollars on Amazon for a pack of six shelves and the ones I showed you that are up there on my wall right now is actually only five of the shelves huh Can I show you this? I didn't finish it. did you draw that yeah it's supposed to be you that's me yeah. <laughs> huh <laughs> thanks for envisioning me so skinny I'll take it <laughs> I love that good job well you wanted me to do this to you uh no no thanks. Thanks for I'll stay like that. Thank you. <laughs> and you know how I did this? I did it like this. Uh-huh. Oh, that's a good idea. You're smart. I copy and paste it. Out. Very good. That was a good idea. A video. Good job. <coughs> Jayu is into animating you guys. I don't know how she does it. She figures out how to animate little cartoons. Her and her brother are very, very artistic. Like, they like to draw. And me and my sister, when we were growing up, <sighs> we could draw, but we just didn't like to. <laughs> we'd rather sing. We'd rather be on stage performing. We'd rather play instruments. We would rather act. Like, we were more performing artists than visual artists. So even though we can do that stuff, it just wasn't that appealing to us because... You can't interact with it, I guess, with like a picture, <laughs> you know, like this, this graphic right here on this. Oh gosh, of course you're going to fall down. This doll shirt. This is a graphic, a portrait of a Barbie looks doll that my son Jimu drew for me. And we actually have merch on the channel that have all of these um, little portraits on different shirts that you can um, get for yourself. Obviously they're not in doll scale, but this to my son he did this in like five seconds like he did no effort whatsoever he just was like yeah okay mom here you go I'm like it's so easy for him to do it and now because we have technology he can do a lot of his drawings um digitally so he'll just draw them with like a stylus on his ipad and then because it's on his iPad, he can make any kind of effects that he wants. Like, he can make it look like a water painting. He can make, I mean, a, a watercolor painting or oil painting. Or he can pixelate it. Or he can just do whatever he wants. You know what I'm saying? So, there's really no limit of what graphics I can get out of him. Because he can draw just about anything. Anything. And his skills, when he was my daughter's age compared to what he does now it's like how how is that possible <laughs> you know i don't know how he's doing it but his brain just works like that so my daughter i can see she's kind of going down the same path with her art but instead of drawing still pictures she's into animating and making the pictures move and she's using different apps and stuff to do that and she's getting more and more advanced i'm trying to get her to the point where she's actually telling stories with it and it's not just Look what I drew. It's just a dancing kangaroo. Like, I wanted to have a storyline. What's the kangaroo's name? Why is he dancing? Like, what's going on here? What's going on in his life, right? That's what I'm trying to get her to. But she she's getting there. So we try to encourage them to do things that interest them because 
why not right how are you gonna get good at it unless you practice and do it and I feel like a lot of times when you're a parent, some of the things that your kids are into can come off very silly because you're like, what are you going to do with that? Like, how is that going to help you make money one day? And that's kind of how we um, measure whether or not certain hobbies are worth being into or not. And I don't really like that because I'm a very artistic person and a creative person. And people have been trying to stifle my creativity since I was a kid. No matter how hard you try to stifle it, it's not going to work. It's going to come out this way or that way, one way or another. Like, the, all the stuff that I do with dolls, you know, it's a way for me to express my creative side as well. It's a form of art for me. And there was a time I remember when we lived in um, Carolina, my mother, she came and stayed with us for a little while, right? Like a hot second before she caught an attitude and ran off back to New York. And... She would try, she would say little things to try to discourage me from doing things with my dolls. And this was when I was like at the height of videos on Broken Dolly TV, where we were just like constantly turning out videos. We were doing live videos every week. And this was my life. Like, all I did was doll stuff, you know? But at the time, we lived in a nice big house. I had plenty of space and plenty of free time. My husband worked most of the time. Our cost of living there was extremely low in North Carolina. So it wasn't a necessity for us to be always just constantly working and working and working, trying to make money. So we had a lot of leisurely time. It was very laid back. And it was fine. I didn't see anything wrong with it. And like being able to get that expression out was therapeutic for me. So I spent a lot of my time making content and sharing it with you guys and look at how tall she she's so tall she's not even in my frame <laughs> bro <laughs> what do i need to raise my my camera goodness girl she whiz liz what is going on all right let's do a little adjustment let's do a little adjustment so miss ebay here can be in the shot um Yeah, I have two of these dolls that I keep out on display and I just treat them like they're twin sisters. But I don't know. I think I have more of a liking for this one than the other one. I don't dislike the other one. I just gravitate towards this one more if I have to pick only one of them to pull off the shelf. I think she just has a more interesting look because the way that her eyes look is very different than the promo pictures. And the other one that I have on display she looks more like the promo pictures do so this one to me seems a little more unique and that's the only reason why i just gravitate towards this one more but i i like them both the same and i love their hair their hair is like my favorite thing on on the doll it is so sleek it's so sleek so so smooth and and uh, for those who missed it this hair is the same hair that i used for this doll's um reroot job so because i knew i was gonna love that hair texture and I do. I do love it. It's very nice. Anyway, so my mother used to just say like the weirdest things to me. And she tried to, one time she kept, she, she was in my house. She's like, I said she's in my house. Well, she was in my house because she was living with us at the time. She had moved to North Carolina and was staying with us, right? This lady going to say, aren't you tired of hoarding dolls? <laughs> because Adonis came home with another batch of dolls that he had picked up from someplace. And he like surprised me with some dolls. So I was like, oh, yay, thank you so much. And she's like, aren't you tired of hoarding dolls? And I had to really look at her like, mother, can you stop? <laughs> can you stop running your mouth? Um, first of all, nobody's hoarding anything. Second of all, it's my house. <laughs> Third of all, uh, my husband brought me a gift. Stop hating, right? <laughs> I was like, what is her problem? But people will do that to you. They will try to stifle your creativity because they just don't get it. They don't see what the... What is the use of this? And I'll just be looking at her like, why do you crochet? What is the use of you crocheting? <laughs> you just like to do it. So like, what if I made you feel bad that you have yarn all over the place and made you feel like you're wasting your time because you like to, to do that? Like, bruh, <laughs> to each his own, right? I don't know what to do with this doll, you guys. I really don't know what to do with her. I thought it was the clothes. I thought it's because she just didn't have the right clothes on. And so I put her in this outfit that's more like a modern style outfit to see if I would like her better. This doll is originally, it's a um, uh, Hard Rock Cafe doll. 
and she's got a Leah head sculpt. Not a Leah, Leah. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, and she's got like blonde hair on the bottom and this dark black hair on the top. I didn't alter this doll. I found her at a thrift store, honestly, and she came with she was, she came wearing her original top, but her pants were the wrong pants, and then. She's on her original body, so I had to give her, like, I had to clean her up. I had to wash her hair. I don't know, but there's something sticky in her hair. It's, like, sticking together. I have to wash it over again because I don't know what is making it sticky like that, but that's freaking me out. So I'm going to wash her hair one more time, but I thought if, after I washed her hair, I was going to, like, fall in love with her, and I was just going to be like, yeah, let me do something with this doll. Let me give her a made-to-move body. Let me put her on my shelf. I really just, I was waiting for the inspiration to hit me. And so far, nothing. I've had her for weeks. I'm, I'm just, I don't know what to do with her. <laughs> I don't know what to do with her. I don't know. Because, like, Hard Rock Cafe dolls are discontinued, obviously. And so, it will be a waste for me to just be like, eh, I don't want her. But, just, she just seems so boring. Like, is it just me? She just seems so boring and blase and like i'm not a giant fan of leah's face mold to begin with so the few leah's that i have i gotta be like really into them to be having them out on display i think i have maybe two in my collection that i like but i have more than two leah's all together in my collection so i don't know but i mean if she wasn't a thrift store find i wouldn't have gotten her so I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this doll. Somebody give me a suggestion. I don't know if I want to waste a whole made to move body on her because I'm not sure if that's going to make me like her even more. Some dolls, I just feel like I see their face and I can I have a whole vision in my mind of like who they are. And I know I, I got to have joints. Like she got she got to be mobile. She got to be doing something up in here. I got to be able to pose her. They just give me a vibe. This one, she's literally like a statue. Like she's literally just staring off into space she has no preferences for anything she doesn't want anything she's just like whatever i was like oh maybe i'll do her nails They're already painted black <laughs> like there's nothing to do to her <laughs> this is her original jewelry too that she's got on this thing and these dog tags that already was on the doll so and it's just it's such a classic line the Hard Rock Cafe line is such a classic line that I feel bad about having these like nonchalant feelings towards this doll. I feel like I should like her more. I was thinking maybe I'll use her as a literal mannequin for when I have like outfits and things that I want to list on eBay. Then maybe I will use her as a mannequin to do that. But I don't even do that often enough for me to be like needing a whole dedicated body you know what i mean to be my mannequin i don't know maybe i'm just overthinking it i just i don't know you guys maybe it's just me um tammy said oh wait i read that one already hold on a second let me skip to the part where i didn't read let's see <laughs> oh boy my eyes really need new glasses Oh, I read all of that. I read that. I read that. I read that too. And that. What in the world? How far did I scroll up? <laughs> okay, now I know where I am. I don't want to Yeah. Um... Okay. Okay, you gotta get past me. I'll go behind you. Yeah, you can. You can get past me. Sorry, guys. I'm blocking. I'm blocking the way in my room. Um, Tevin said the Wal Walmart that sells the fresh dolls sells the natural releases too, and those WalMarts are usually <laughs> in the hood. That's what I'm hearing. That's what we're hypothesizing. So I gotta find me a hood is what the hell I need to do. Um, Galaxy said, maybe, but I'll definitely look into the newer extra dolls. But it's usually the fantasy color hair that have the bad quality hair. So I tend to avoid those. Which sucks. Because, like, the fantasy hair colors, that's, like, the fun hair colors that everyone's gonna gravitate towards first. So why does that hair have to be the sucky hair? 
I wish natural releases was an uh, indicator for fresh dolls. Around my section of the East Coast, natural releases are replacing fresh dolls on the shelves. Ooh, that's what Minnie G is saying. And I don't, I don't blame them for that being the case because if I had to pick between a natural releases and a fresh dolls, at least for the girls, I feel like I will just naturally go with the natural releases dolls because they have a more... Um, I know this is going to sound so crazy. It's going to sound crazy, but it's just how I feel about it. I feel like the Naturalistas dolls' faces just look more soft and feminine. This has nothing to do with skin tones because people have this crazy misconception in America that anything that's dark-skinned isn't considered feminine enough or ladylike enough because there's just this crazy... Um, stigma that comes with black women being depicted as overly strong and masculine and aggressive and the darker the skin tone the more you associate with that so we have this this uh, stereotype in America but in this case that's not why I'm saying what I'm saying like look at this doll she is the darkest okay she's the darkest skin tone you can find on the market anywhere absolutely gorgeous she's very feminine she's got a very soft face sculpt she's got a very womanly look there's no mistake in her for anything but a very feminine woman you know what i mean and her skin tone has nothing to do with it at all so i i need to make that very very clear because people love to jump to this conclusion that oh you're picking that because she's light skin no 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 you could be light skinned and be masculine trust me <laughs> yes you can you can be mad you can be light skinned and not be ladylike absolutely you can so that's definitely not what it is but for me if i had to pick between the two i'm gonna go with the naturalistas simply because their faces just come off looking a lot softer and more ladylike and um more believable i guess as like a real woman's face whereas with the fresh dolls to me they seem a little more exaggerated and a little bit more they just i don't know they just don't seem as soft looking i guess they're real like harsh like very like in your face you know it's not a subtle kind of a face sculpt so maybe i don't know i don't know if i'm explaining this right but like that's what i'm trying to say um let's see I missed something here. Uh, no, I read that already. BB's dolls and TV. Hi. How do you feel about polypropylene hair? I don't think I like that hair. If that's the hair we're talking about, that like crazy hair texture that they have on the Barbie Extra dolls, that's the worst. Like, I don't even know why they bother. Why would you sell a doll for $25 and put that kind of hair in the head when there's plenty of dolls that go for way cheaper than that that have just fine regular saran hair like it to me i don't understand their logic when they do this and for them to say oh well it's the colors well when since when did the colors matter because we've always had barbie dolls with crazy hair colors look at all of those mermaid dolls and fairy dolls they've been had crazy hair colors and still made them out of saran hair like and still charge a very low price so if you're gonna charge me 25 bucks because this doll is sell extra well then can i get some extra hair like can i get some nice hair please what is the point <laughs> you know what i'm saying i just don't get it um gypsy that's why i'm rerouting mine because homegirl gotta meet the standards of my doll here i feel you man Blake said, I love that skipper sculpt. She has such a sultry face. I almost hate that was used for a skipper doll. Not a fan of her hair either. That dark brown hair with the purple streak is awful and dated. About collecting faces, I hear that. That's how I feel about my G.I. Joes. There are a lot of handsome Joes out there. There really are, aren't there? Um, it's all so interesting when I look at like um, action figure guys' faces. And I be like, oh, he's handsome. Do they know this doll is handsome? Like, for some reason, I'll be thinking that <laughs> men don't care about whether or not the dolls are actually good looking as long as they look real tough. So I'm like, do they know he's good looking? Let me show you guys one of my dolls that I think is so handsome. I don't know what celebrity's face they stole to make this face sculpt, but I'm just assuming that they did. I don't know for sure. But this guy, I, thought, I think he's good looking. Can we see him? 
I think he's really good looking and he's got like an expression on his face too with these furrowed eyebrows. I love that, but I don't, I really don't display these guys at all lately. I used to a lot before, but I don't display them anymore because I don't have room for them. And this, uh, again, this is why I got more shelves because I need to, I need to spread more of my dolls out so that they can get proper display, you know, opportunities. And I want to see all these cool faces that I have that they're just hiding in my, in my drawers because I don't have space for them. Ugh so annoying um let me see who else left comments <sighs> bb said i'm tired of that purple streak on skipper's head she needs to dislike drawing a lot too that's why i'm a doll collector i wanted my characters to be more dimensional yeah i feel the same way i feel like what i would draw that's flat i'd rather it be like 3d <laughs> so for me dolls are like kind of like statues that you can interact with you know um, I just got some new hair from a friend I'm going to use for one of my 2000s skipper sculpts. I bet it'll turn out real good. Tevin said, BB's dolls, propylene hair sucks and sucks bad. <laughs> There's the answer to your question. Um, I definitely agree it's such a bad hair quality. It completely ruins the doll, at least in my opinion. This galaxy saying that. Bree said, I saw in a video of the Simone doll being rooted. A small strip of pink hair on either side of her head and she looks really pretty yeah I'm thinking about doing the same kind of method with one of these um, dolls too because obviously one of mine is bald now because I took all her hair and gave it to her but that leaves an opportunity for me to try out a new look on that head sculpt and see how I like it and that's what I love about some of these dolls like I mean, really, like, if their faces are really on point, you can pretty much do anything you want to them, and they're going to still look really good. And I'm looking forward to, um, I'm looking forward to, well, let me tell you about, about that after I read these comments. Curry body from this looks wave match the light skin naturalistas. Okay, that's good to know. My personal suggestion would be a nose piercing, beauty marks, articulated body, a few braids, I like silver as her color too. That's Janine. Galaxy said nose piercing. I can definitely see and maybe a sleeve tattoo. Yeah, she already has a tattoo to start with. Although if I don't keep her on this body, well then that will be irrelevant. But um, I think she looks like she would have tattoos anyways. Nose piercing beauty marks. Articulate her body and a few braids. That will bring her to life. I can see it. Yeah, she just looks so... Just... Uh, just look at her. I'm <laughs> like, need I say more? <laughs> yeah, I know what it is. She, just, well, she has no personality. Um, Tammy said, where do you sell on eBay? You know, a few people keep asking me about my, my eBay account. Which I always forget to like post. Because it's not really my account. It's really my son's account that I use because he don't ever use it. So, <laughs> that's how lazy I am. I don't want to be bothered making a whole eBay account. So, I don't even know what the account is called. <laughs> I need to, like, look at it. Maybe I should rename it. Can you rename your, your eBay account, like, on a whim? Or do you have to be approved <laughs> for a new name? Because um, it's, it's not a word. It's not, like, an actual name. It's just letters and numbers. So, I have to, I have to look at it. But once I do, I'll post it up here so you guys can see and, and i'll put a link so y'all can just go over there and see if there's ever anything up there because i just randomly list things when i have like too many of something like i have too many heads like this i have too many of these heads floating around i'll just list it up there or if i have too many um outfits i'll list it over there if i have combinations of outfits that i just taken up space i'll list it over there and this last time i had sold a bunch of wheelchairs like who just buys a bunch of wheelchairs well someone did because they just bought a whole bunch of wheelchairs and uh and like a lot <laughs> that i sold so i don't even know if i made a profit off of that because to be honest because i wasn't even trying to sell them i just wanted to get rid of them but i don't want to throw them in a the garbage can because i know somebody can use it so i priced it real low so that someone who needs it they can just take it off my hands and keep it moving so if anything, it's like they really got it for free. They just paid for the shipping, kind of. <laughs> like, that's basically what it was, you know? But I'd rather do that than to just have clutter that I don't need. And I don't like to just throw away my doll stuff because a lot of it is in good condition. There's nothing wrong with it. 
I just don't have a need for it. So, like, I don't need to hold on to it just because I got it, you know? Again, this is why I told my mother, uh, excuse you, lady, I am not no hoarder. Because hoarders don't get rid of nothing. What are you talking about? Tevin said, you got to think about the fresh dolls have some articulation in the elbows and knees. And natural releases don't have any but the five basic points. I do factor that in, absolutely. But at the same time, at least for the kind of collector that I am, I can't worry about your body like that because... I know I have options when it comes to rebodying, which I do with just regular Barbie dolls on the daily. So, like, for me, having better articulation isn't going to outweigh the how cute your face is unless I'm using your body as the donor. You feel me? Like, I only care about superior articulation if potentially this body is going to end up being a donor. But if the doll itself, like the face of the doll is supposed to be part of the equation, then... I can't really factor in how much articulation they have because that can be easily remedied. But if you got a weird face, that means I got to do a repaint. I got to do all this customizing. I got to do a whole bunch of stuff to camouflage your weird face, you know? <laughs> or like crazy hair that I can't tame. Oh my gosh. Fresh dolls females have bigly head syndrome. I have two. I never unboxed. I did buy one of the guys. Um... Yeah, their their faces to me just seem so large compared to the other dolls in the same scale. So when they're next to each other, they very clearly look like, oh, what doll is that? Like, it doesn't look like they all blend in. Like, if I have my Integrity dolls, my Barbie dolls, and a couple of other off-brand dolls, like, I don't know, like um, Pretty Girls dolls, you know, something like that. If I have them all standing next to each other, for the most part, they blend. Like, you have to know about dolls in order to tell that this is not a Mattel doll or this is not a Barbie doll. You can't really tell, you know? But with fresh dolls, even if you're not a doll collector, as soon as you see them next to the other dolls, immediately they stand out. Like, well, why is she there? Who is she supposed to be? Mattel made a doll like that? Like, you'd be confused, you know? <laughs> what do you call that doll? So, I think the natural leases blend a little bit better with Barbies. Just their faces. The, the head size is a pretty decent size when it comes to that. And then, of course, they have rooted hair. So, hopefully, you'll be able to restyle the hair if it's not looking the way you want it looking out of the box. Let's hope. But, as far as the quality of the hair, I don't know. Because, again, with the fresh dolls, the the texture of the um the stuff that the fiber that they're using for the hair to me it's very reminiscent of Hasbro hair to me but and I don't really like that hair texture I can't even say it's like Hasbro hair I feel like it's a grade beneath that because it just has the the feeling like if you're not careful that hair is going to mat up on you so quick and I'm not saying that it will I don't know that it will but to me, it just feels like it gives me a little bit of anxiety that I have to be very careful with that hair, you know? So, I don't know. But with the Naturalista's doll hair, I don't know what the quality of that hair is. I don't know what it's made out of because I haven't handled one. And I don't think I've watched enough reviews to really, like, get an idea of what the hair texture is like. Um, Tevin said, the Naturalista's have better fashion packs than Barbie, but the hair quality on some is not good quality. Really? So they don't all have the same kind of hair quality? Mmm, okay. Not all fresh dolls have big heads, just the dolls after wave three got bigger. They got... Man, you said they got bigger. <laughs> they was already kind of big, but they got even bigger <laughs> after wave three. <laughs> they they got to start off small and then work their way up to big. <laughs> Cadu Falido said, uh, well, something in <laughs> Portuguese that I, I don't understand Portuguese. But uh, that's what's up. Thanks for joining us from Brazil. Tevin said, big head dolls are what's in style now. Some of them. But here's the thing with the big headed dolls. like, And this is why I don't collect Rainbow High or the OMG dolls. Uh, you gotta be big headed, but like proportionate. Like you, I gotta be able to like handle you without you just falling over because your giant head is getting in the way. Like Pulip dolls, like their heads are so huge and their bodies are so small and the weight distribution is so off. <laughs> you like you can, you know what I'm saying? Like 
Blythe, like the doll that I have, I almost never display her, but she's so adorable. I love her. I just be looking at her just laying in her drawer, staring at me when I happen to open that drawer. But other than that, I don't really interact with that doll that much because it's too much for me to like pose her the way that I want to pose her and for her to stay standing properly on her um, display thing. It's just too much work. I don't want to do all of this work. Like, can you just stay still? You know what I mean? That's, I don't know. Is it just me? And then these are toys. So I feel like as a toy, you got to be very user friendly. You cannot be a toy and then be driving everybody nuts because you're just all dysfunctional. Um, you know, they're for kids, but come on. I bought my daughter some of those Nana Not Surprise dolls because she thought they were just adorable and she loves them. But don't you know, they don't sit. Like, you, they have a joint in their legs. Why? I don't know. They just almost like, they just twist like this. The, the joint in the leg looks like this. And it's the way that they cut this part here, at, like the way, the way that it connects to the body. They just twist like this. But if you try to fold them like this so they can sit, they will not do it, you guys. And that just is so frustrating. And, like, I see my daughter struggling when she's trying to play with those dolls because they can only perpetually stand comfortably. And there's so much stuff that the kids are trying to do with their dolls where they require them to sit. You feel me? A lot of the, the stuff the dolls are doing, the scenes take place indoors. They're at school. They're at home. They're doing something indoors. So they need to be able to sit and they just don't bend right. And I'm like, this is marketed to children? Why? Who thought this was a good idea? I like the concept of those dolls. And they're very adorable. They're very cute. I want to buy her more of them because she really likes them. But it's just very unfunctional when you're trying to play with the doll. It's just frustrating, you know? Is that too much to ask for? I mean, gee whiz, Liz. Janine said, I 100% agree about the natural Lisa's face being more feminine. It's because fresh dolls are more rectangular. Oh, is that what it is? They have more like a pronounced jawline, right? Tevin said, by the way, some new fresh dolls are coming and the look they look better than the ones they are selling now. Um, Janine said, try flocking on Simone. Hmm, that'd be interesting. Daylight said, I know Tevin and I don't have any of these dolls. They don't fit with my daylight city riders tevin said braid hair in the beauty supplies cheaper and better than the doll they use for doll hair i've seen someone reroute their dolls with that hair and it was better yeah i always be thinking like why don't people just go and buy weave <laughs> just buy weave and put the weave hair in the doll's head so you don't have to spend all this extra money on um freaking doll hair but I think it's because the doll hair is already like kind of, you know, it's kind of easy to get get to work because of the way that they uh, package it, if that makes sense. Like the way that it comes, it's kind of ready to go. Whereas, yeah, it's cheaper, I think, to get um, weave hair because it's more bulk of hair. You'll get more hair, but it's, it's not as user friendly for someone who's trying to do it with dolls. You have to take a couple more extra steps to prep the hair so that you can use it for your dolls. But quality-wise, I think you would probably be satisfied with the hair from, like, a beauty supply store. I don't see why not. I did, um, I put human hair in, like, a baby doll one time. I rooted it into her head. And it was okay, but the hair that I used, it wasn't, like, really high-end hair. It was, like, a very, very cheap human hair. You know, back in a day when virgin hair didn't exist yet on the public market and you just got whatever you got. It was like whatever grade hair they had at the beauty supply store. It was something like that. So it's probably like human hair blend. It probably wasn't real 100% human hair. But to me, when I rooted it into the doll's head, it just felt very like rough. It felt rough and uh, the strands were really thick. So you had to use very little small sparse amounts of hair at a time to do it. I don't know. I didn't like it. I don't like the texture of the hair. But, uh, but I mean, it wasn't harder to root into the doll's head or anything like that. It's just the way that the hair behaves. It wasn't behaving the way I imagined it should. But I did like that you could, like, do, um, different styles with the hair. You could, you could put heat on the hair because it was human hair. So you could, like, actually use a real straightening iron or a curling iron. And 
But I mean, it's a baby doll. Wow, how many times do you need to put an iron on a baby doll's hair? Like, what are you doing to a baby that you need to be using a curling iron all the time? <laughs> um, the Kayla doll would look good with a half shave. That's Janine's suggestion. And she's talking about this doll right here. Kayla's the other name for the sculpt, you guys. Leah and Kayla. She has multiple names. So, just in case you're getting confused. Galaxy said, I could also see that doll being a brunette rather than black hair. I don't know. I feel you. I feel you on that. Tevin said, I hope physical Toys R Us stores come back. Because Walmart and Target sometimes can be boring looking for dolls. Hi, Mike. Kevin said, some of the naturalista's hair feels stiff. Bree said, I think. Kadu said a big hug from Brazil. It is similar to Spanish. Yeah, thank God for Spanish and French because the years of studying French and Spanish helps me to understand a little bit better when I see like Italian written out and also Portuguese when I see it written out. Sometimes when I listen to Portuguese, it sounds like a fusion of French and Spanish to me. I know that sounds so weird, but it's almost like Spanish with a French accent if that's possible. <laughs> but that's how it sounds to my ears but um if 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 you can kind of understand french or spanish then it makes it a little bit easier when you run into other languages that have similar wording or whatever so when i read it i feel like i can understand kind of what it says but i don't know for sure because i'm just guessing you know <laughs> um tevin tevin you are right i reroute with beauty store hair it's better for boil perms oh yeah really this is daylight responding to tevin talking about that i just like to read you guys' comments out loud because when this video goes into um when it's done and it's like just published regular video that people can find on the channel they cannot see you guys' comments so i just read them out loud so that people know what i'm responding to because if i just read it in my head and i start answering you back they're gonna be like what are y'all talking about <laughs> who asked right tevin said one of my naturally says doll's hair feels so dry not even surprised michael said i think the big head doll and small head doll are really hard to put them together it looks really weird um yeah when you're trying to hybrid dolls and you're trying to switch bodies between this kind of doll and that kind of doll and if the head proportions and the body's proportions don't really match too good, then it can be a big crazy hassle. You know what I love to do? I love to put those big-headed dolls onto Barbie bodies. <laughs> uh, you know those Barbie extra mini dolls? I have one that I, I got. I used her actual body for one of my Kelly dolls that I wanted to articulate. And then I still had the head left, so I put the head onto a Barbie body. And I think she looks much better on a Barbie body. She looks like a grown woman because those little mini extra dolls, they're supposed to be little kids, but they don't look like little kids. They got makeup on. They got all this long hair. They got all these high-end, like, complex hair hairstyles. Don't all little kids be walking around looking like that? <laughs> they be dressed like hoochie mamas. I'm like, these are not little kids. What are you doing? So... Those big head dolls, I'll be putting them on Barbie bodies, and they look just fine to me on the Barbie body. Same with Ever After High dolls and the Empty Square dolls and uh, who else I had that were big-headed. I think I had a couple of Monster High dolls, but from, like, back in the day, not this ne this newest um, release. And I would pop them onto Barbie bodies because their original bodies just seemed so scrawny and, like, unproportionate to their real... You know to their head size i understand they're supposed to look like cartoon characters and they're skinny and you know they're proportioned like that in the actual shows so i get it but practicality wise as a doll it's just like this is too much i cannot balance my doll properly on the stand because she's trying to tip over too much so i just end up putting them onto barbie's bodies instead and i like them way better with a little bit more like you know width to the bodies tevin said i bought one of the HBCU dolls on Friday and I finally finished trimming her hair on Saturday and so much shedding when I was detangling it. What's up? I finished it. Okay, I'm walking. Okay, um oh I'm breakdancing. Okay. What else? Well, you drew this. Let me see. Does it come up on the screen? Oh, you can kind of see it. Yeah, this is the 
kind of stuff that Jackson likes to do in her spare time. Thank you. <laughs> she says that's me. And apparently I'm breakdancing now, so that's what's up. Is that how I got so skinny? <laughs> ah, Galaxy said, my natural Lisa doll I have is definitely getting a new hair because I am not a fan. Bela said, my, fre my first fresh doll has Barbie-sized head. Short neck, though. I like her. <laughs> uh, Bree said, yeah, you're correct. French and Spanish are very similar. Blake said, that does not sound weird at all. Galaxy said, also, quick question. Do y'all naturally hair feel weird? The one I, the one doll I own, when I first opened her, the hair felt a bit slick or a little oily. Oh, that's a good question. Does anybody else have that experience with a... Which fresh dolls do you have, though? Because... Tevin was saying that all of them don't have the same kind of hair texture. My Leah hair feels so dry. That's what Tevin is saying. Um, and somebody, people keep asking me about this doll all after the fact. So I'm going to tell you guys now. Because I know somebody's going to see this video and be like, what is that doll? This doll is part of a two-pack. She comes with this guy. Oh, he almost knocked you over, bruh. Sir, sir, contain yourself. You got a little too happy to be on camera, okay? Anyway, um, they came together. They're not on their original bodies. Obviously, they didn't come with articulated bodies. They just came with model muse bodies. So the two of them together is called Power Pair. And there's two versions. There's the Hispanic version, and then there's these guys, the black versions. The full face mold for her is called Marissa. Model of the moment, Marissa. So if you're looking for a similar doll, if you don't end up, you know, wanting to buy this two-pack because it's very, very pricey, then you can look up model of the moment, Marissa, face sculpt, and then you'll be able to see all the different dolls that have this face mold. This is the closed mouth version, but there's also an open mouth version. The open mouth version does not have like a gaping wide tooth smile it's just her lips are just parted so you can see her teeth but it's not a big wide grin so either sculpt i think is good but i prefer the closed mouth i just do and i had to get one because of her skin tone and i was in love with her hair because it's like twists she's got these are not braids these are straight up little twists you know so i thought that was unique and i was like gotta have you i have no marissa sculpts in my collection other than her so she was on my grail list of face sculpts not my grail doll my grail face sculpts there's a difference and so i figured i would get this version if i can only have one then i'll be satisfied to only have this one let's see who else said something good well, you guys always say good things. I don't know what... Why do I read it like that? Let me see who says something good. Then I end up reading everybody's comments anyway. So it's like... It's not like... Yours got left out because it wasn't a good comment. You know? Tevin said, My Dana hair didn't look right out of the box. So I trimmed her ends, curled her hair with a curling iron. It was better after that. Well, you could curl it with a curling iron and didn't fry... Galaxy said, the one I have has the golden dress with the slit in the back of her legs. I forgot her name. I think that one is Dana. I have her and her promo picture was so misleading. That's Tevin responding to Galaxy. Um, Michael said, I got a old-fashioned model Teresa head. It's really small than my Barbie Extra one. <laughs> Word. Um, Daylight said, let me open a natural Lisa's doll and check her hair. Mm-hmm. We're starting an investigation over here, y'all. Starting an investigation. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions about this here method or whatever else you guys have questions about, of course, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments. If you're watching this after the stream is over, you can leave your, your questions in the comments, and I'll try my best to respond to you accordingly. And, of course... The comments is always open for other people to respond to each other as well. And before we go, one other thing. I got to get this off my chest, you guys. I just got to get it off of my chest. And it's okay with me. It's not a big deal. 
I just gotta get it off my chest. Adrian Pulido said, what's the face sculpt for the Ken and the Power set? The face sculpt for him, um, what is the name of the sculpt? Oh my gosh, doesn't the sculpt have a name? What is his name? I don't know what the sculpt's name is off the top of my head. I gotta look in my book because I'm sure I wrote it down. But it's the same sculpt that they use for the Texas A&M Ken, which is like crazy hard to get your hands on. Um, the the Texas A&M black version of him, but it's the same sculpt. They just gave him a different face up. So and he's of course got a completely different skin tone than that Ken. That Ken. There are no bodies that have made to move joints that you can give to Texas A&M Ken. And that doll comes with an articulated body already, but they're very, very expensive. So that's not something that most people are going to even have on their radar to buy. This Ken also did not come with articulation. Um, his body was stiff, but he matches the Barbie looks Ken from the first wave. So it was very easy to find him a body donor. And even though a lot of the dolls in the first wave were, like, super hard to get a hold of at the time, I do see them circulating on Amazon and some of them over on eBay for, uh, not their original prices, but they're, like, reasonable. You know, they're, like, somewhere between $20 and $40-ish, depending on which one it is. So they're not super hard to get your hands on if you're just determined to get one. Um... People are spending more money than that for just a face. So, you know. Tevin said, my HBCU doll hair is softer than the Naturalistas, but Just Play Factories do make the Naturalistas and HBCU dolls. And Just Play dolls usually have crappy hair, but not the purpose toys dolls. It's like a whole, you got to do like a whole research project to figure out which dolls have what kind of hair <laughs> before we buy them nowadays. And I feel some kind of way about that. Like, what the heck, Mattel? <laughs> what in the world? I say this to Mattel because Mattel is the standard and I feel like they should not be dropping in their quality because it's setting a bad example for the other doll companies. If Mattel can sell you a doll for $25 call her all kinds of extra, and then have crappy hair quality, then of course if I'm a new doll company that's just starting out, I'm going to be like, man, why are we wasting our money trying to put all this nice saran hair in these dolls' heads when Mattel is over there charging $25, $55 for the Tooth Fairy with her garbage hair, and they just getting away with it? People just spending the money? They're not even questioning it? <laughs> Excuse you. I ain't doing all of this work. So if I was those people, I would be using crappy fibers for a doll hair for $12 dolls, $8 dolls, even $20 dolls that they're competing with Barbie dolls, you know? What's the difference? So I, that's why I blame Mattel. Because Mattel, step your game up, all right? Don't be slacking. Don't be over here slazacking. Don't be doing that. That's whack. Um, <laughs> Janine said, I think that guy's mold is literally called A.A. Ken Basic. Yeah, you know what? You're right. That is what he's called. Basic. <laughs> She's just A.A. Ken Basic. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> That's why I'm sitting here like, what is his? Because I knew it wasn't a name. It's not like a... he doesn't have an actual name for this face sculpt. <laughs> I was like, what did they call it? <laughs> basic. Okay. Um, he's just a basic black guy's face. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know what I want them to do? I want them to let Carlisle Nuera design a doll with new sculpts. I want some new sculpts with Carlisle's touch on them. Like, when are we going to get one of those? Because I feel like, um, it's about time. All right? It's, it's been a long time. It's been a while. Let's get it popping, please. Yo. I got to show you guys this doll when it comes in. It's not going to be here for probably, I don't know, it might be a few weeks. It might be sooner depending on what's going on, how their stock is looking. But I have no definitive delivery date yet. Um, I recently ordered the, what did you call that thing? Janine, what you call that doll? <laughs> CJ Walker. That's, that's what, yeah. All right, that one. Yeah, Madam CJ Walker. And... Uh, I don't own any dolls with that face sculpt. I have so much to say about that doll. And I got her on Amazon. The price kept fluctuating. It was like going from the original price, which is about 35 to 65 back and forth, back and forth every other day. And I was like, 
Ain't nobody got time for that, right? So I end up ordering her. But, of course, now I gotta wait for them to ship the freaking doll. Because even though I have Prime, for whatever reason, it's not going to ship for some time. So I gotta wait. But my donor body already came. And then I realized, I was looking at the donor body. I was realizing that her original body, the Ma Madam C.J. Walker doll's body, is curvy. And I really want to see what she looks like on a curvy body. So I'm contemplating putting her head onto that body just to see how it will look if I like her better curvy or if I like her in this kind of body because I mean I love the superior articulation of this body of course there's just you can't even there's no there's no compensation for that but the aesthetic of that curvy body what I love about the curvy body that's on that doll it's not a made to move body but the collector style cu cu curvy body and the the dimensions of that body is slightly different than the made to move curvy body it's a little bit different so i think that version of the body is a lot more like elegant it's a lot more streamlined because it doesn't have all the bulky joints and just a lot more shapely i guess like the torso the way that the waistline looks the belly looks the chest looks i just like the the shape of those um those a little bit more than the curvy made to move bodies look but the functionality all day every day if there was a curvy made to move body that could fit the skin tone i would absolutely put her on that and just be like that's it i'm done that's her body now it's just permanent that's just what it is i feel like she would look real cute with a curvy body but i don't know we'll see so when that doll arrives i'll show you guys a head swap of that body on this doll's face so we can see how she looks and decide whether we should keep her like that or keep her like this but i do love this look on her too of course but um it seems like each swap she's gonna get bigger and bigger because her original body is a model muse body and that one has a very slender physique compared to a made to move body which is a little bit thicker and she looks fine with the made-to-move body, I think. So, I'm satisfied with her like this. This is the wheelchair doll's body that I use for her. And then, that doll has a similar skin tone. So, I was just thinking, well, maybe I'll try it on her. Because I'm probably going to end up using one of... Um, I'm going to end up using one of these bodies for that doll. To give her made-to-move articulation. So, her head's going to end up getting popped off anyway. So, I just wanted to see how it's going to look. So if you're interested in seeing how she, this girl, the Marissa sculpt here, looks with that kind of um, uh, curvy body, then don't miss that video because we're going to show how that looks. Who asked a question? Wait, hold on a second. Maybe it wasn't a question. Uh, Janine said, I agree. Carlisle's best strength is faces, not necessarily fashion. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Um, she said it's more curvaceous. I love that body. Yeah, I think it's really pretty. And I don't want it to go to waste if I do end up swapping heads because I, I'm pretty positive I want to put that doll onto a made-to-move body. But I don't want the body she comes with to just not be used because it's a good body. So, I don't know. I don't know if I want to keep that head on that body. Feel me? Like, I really want to see how she looks with a curvy body because I think this doll will be flying with some curves. Tevin said Bill Greening did better Playline dolls back when he started at Mattel 20 plus years ago. Goodness gracious. I want to see Tevin do a line of dolls. Kind of like how they let, you know, Bill do the whole Barbie looks thing, which is amazing. Love Barbie looks. We need to keep it going. But I want to see, like, what would Carlisle do with a batch of new faces? Because if any of you guys remember my coverage of the Madrid... Um, convention dolls they were spectacular they were so like each singular one of them were amazing right and those dolls were not all dolls that had new sculpts i think most of those dolls had sculpts that had already been used before but the way that he styled them and the way that the skin tone combination with the hair textures that he used they just looked so brand new they looked brand new you forgot that they were like already used up sculpts from before like the kira sculpt like you just, just i just felt like he really mixed it up with the way that he slapped that together so i'm not saying he slapped it together but i'm just that's just how i talk so um you know so i was just thinking like that kind of vision 
with a brand new batch of faces? Like, what would that look like? And I just want to see what he would come up with. I feel like it would be a big hit because Carlisle is so good at giving us things that collectors are looking for. And especially collectors who want to diversify their collection and have a lot of different dolls of color. He's really good at, like, executing that. He don't get it right every single time. Trust me, I don't have blinders on. I'm not one of these reachers that's just like, I'm a fan, so everything you do is amazing. And no. <laughs> but most of the time, he pulls it off. So, and, and it's authentic. So I just want to see what that's going to look like for him. I hope there's a project coming soon, even if it's only two or three dolls, where he's able to work with a fresh batch of face sculpts and just give us something brand new looking. That'd be amazing. Or even if he could use sculpts that are not heavily used, like this one, like Odile. I want to see what he would do with an Odile sculpt in like a slightly darker skin tone. I just feel like it would be ugh, bliss. <laughs> Who's going to pitch that to Carlisle? Somebody stalk him over on Instagram, okay? At Carlisle New Era, because it's going to be too obvious if I do it. He's going to be like, mm-hmm, Gypsy, of course you're going to tell me that that's what you want me to do. But if other people tell him, then he won't know that it was my idea. And then maybe he'll think about it. <laughs> so, just putting that out there. Tevin said, if I do dolls, I start with a line of 1-6 articulated male fashion figures. I will give them made to move joints, realistic faces, like live in Project MC squared with mostly black, but with also Latino, Asian, and native. I hope I can talk a DD into letting me do a line with purpose toys. Wouldn't that be great? I really feel like, you know, these toy companies would benefit greatly by consulting with actual real collectors, adult collectors, who dedicate a lot of our free time to innovating when it comes to our dolls and you know, experimenting, trying out different combinations of heads and bodies and skin tones and hair textures and rerouting and repainting. And, you know, people who have all that experience, why let it go to waste? I feel like if they would just band together with a couple of trusted collectors who know what they're doing, who know what other collectors are looking for, and they're like deep in the Dolly street, so they're part of these conversations... How amazing would that be? Like, a win-win for everybody because the company is going to absolutely come up with a product that people are going to want to spend money on, maybe even buy duplicates of. And then the consumer is winning because we're getting what we want, that we have no problem spending the money on because we are waiting to spend the money on it, you know? Um, Janine said, if I had a doll and I would prioritize male dolls for sure. And Tevin said, that's a topic I can discuss with Didi. Yeah, me and Adonis have had these conversations over the years too. Like, what would it look like? And that's almost exactly what we said. It would be, we would start off with males. We would predominantly make males. And then they would be um, all kinds of different, you know, races and mixtures of races. Because that's another thing too that really is hardly ever represented mixed race people because there's so many of us out here and a lot of people who are mixed that people don't even know are mixed like for example chris brown did you know that he's a quarter white <laughs> for example yara shahidi did you know that she's part palestinian or one of those kind of middle eastern type countries she's half you know tia and tamara mori somebody was talking about them um why don't we have a tia and Tam tamara mori set of twins like sister sister lauren Lauren DeWitt from Chicago, she she was telling me about um, how she, she noticed that the Olsen twins, they got turned into Barbies, but how come we didn't get Sister Sister? You know what I'm saying? Like, stuff like that. And those girls, they're half white and half black. So I feel like we could find all kinds of cool mixes of people to represent with dolls and then also full race people that we can represent with dolls. And I just think <sighs> there's no shortage of combinations here. Why I always do the same old thing over and over and over again? Like, let's do something new, right? So I think that would be brilliant for someone to have an all-male line to start with where the males are the predominant characters and just sprinkle some girls in here and there. And even with fresh dolls, I feel like they execute their boy dolls a lot better than they do the female dolls. Maybe they should just relax with the girls for a little bit and just focus on the males for a while because even just as body donors... 
they would sell way more of those if they concentrated on the males more. We have a shortage of male dolls in the doll like industry to begin with, just all around every brand. So why ain't nobody trying to do that? Like I don't know. I don't know. We got to have more collectors having a say in the production of dolls. That's what I think. That's just my opinion. Um I give Dee Dee credit for giving her naturally says dolls different face sculpts in the first year. Brandy and Destiny's Child got lucky with Mattel back then. Okay, so that's Tevin saying that. Yeah, so before I go, the thing I want to get off my chest is this movie that everybody is up in arms about. What is it called? It's called The Woman King. Okay. And... Of course, it's not related to dolls, but it is related to dolls. I'm going to tell you how it's related. <laughs> the Woman King. And people are flipping out about anybody who's criticizing this movie because they don't like what it represents, right? There's one thing it's supposed to represent, but then there's what it's actually representing. And those two things are colliding in, in the social you know, spheres. So people are having a hard time grasping whether or not they do or don't want to support this movie, right? Um, Janine said, I'm actually kind of shocked that Mattel has never made a movie that looks like me. I figured my look is pretty common. I should have never had to wait for Naturally Sis to have a mini me. Um, Daylight said, Mattel now have Caucasian dolls and the rest are categorized multiracial. So, and that's the thing, like people who have, and this, and even full black people, they're like black people are one of the most diverse pools of DNA on this planet. You won't see black people that you would never even imagine was a black person. I've seen black people who are full black that I thought were Asians that I thought was like when I first met them, I just guessed they oh are you Mexican? And they're like, No, I'm black. <laughs> um, I know a girl who's full black, both parents are black. She's the lightest in her family, okay? And I have a doll that I named after her because it looks just like her. It's one of those fashionista dolls that had on like a floral black romper. And she has the... What face sculpt is it? Her sculpt... Um, I want to say it's... No, 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 no. Hers is the same one as the rainbow fashionista doll. The black one, the real dark one with the long hair. It's that sculpt. What is that sculpt called, you guys? Um, why do I want to say it's pizzazz, but it's, it's not, is it? It's not pizzazz. It's June. June is the sculpt. That's what I'm thinking of. June sculpt, and this particular doll that I'm thinking of, she's got, like, brunette kind of hair with, like, blonde streaks, and she had her hair up in, like, a top knot, and the rest of it was down, and she was a fashionista doll from many waves ago. But anyway, so that doll I named after this friend of mine who looks just like this doll. But she's 100% full black on both sides, right? And out of like 10 brothers and sisters, she's the lightest one. So <laughs> the rest of her family, when you look at them, like they definitely look either like they're black people or they're mixed with black. But she's the only oddball out the whole group that doesn't look like that. And her hair texture is so soft and long that... It's just not the kind of hair texture you associate with black people. So you, you just automatically think she's Hispanic. That's how she looks. She just looks like somebody from Colombia, right? But she really is a black girl. So when I see stuff like that, I just be like, yo, it's, it's mind-boggling how diverse our gene pool is. And I think part of that is because not all black people come from the same black people. We're from all different kinds of tribes that just got grouped in as black people right <laughs> so if you like it think about it how big of a continent is africa there's so many cultures so many races so many um nationalities so many languages spoken there and so many different religions being practiced there is no one standard in africa you know what i mean so of course the descendants of those people are going to be you know having that same thing that same pattern in the rest of their genes especially once it's been watered down with other people mixing in with us like white folks like the native americans like whatever else right so that's first and foremost you can't really put a cap on what a black person looks like because we look like everybody we can look like anybody 
But the problem is that here in the United States, amongst our own people, we have a lot of confusion about what does and doesn't make somebody black. We really have no definition, no specific definition. Like if you ask five different black people what they consider black, they go and give you five different answers. <laughs> five different answers. If you show those five people pictures of different black people that have different kind of features and you told them to point out all the black folks, all five of them are going to pick out a bunch of different people from your lineup. Because we don't have that much education in our own race here about our race. And we don't have a lot of truth being told to us about our race. So when you wipe away a person's history, it's very dangerous to do that. Because how on earth are you supposed to... How do you envision your future when you don't know where you came from? How, how do you do that? It's very difficult to do that. You feel me? So... That's my issue with this movie because the movie is coming off like it's trying to empower black people, especially black women. But if you really like study what it's talking about and the real history behind it and the way that they're depicting the history, I don't know that it's helping the image of black women at all. To be honest, I don't. I feel like it's further perpetuating the image. Like we were talking about earlier about dark skin and light skin and how a lot of dark skin women are just portrayed as overly masculine and strong and aggressive and that's part of socially why a lot of our women are left behind when it comes to marriage and dating situations they're not being married as much as the other races of women are right and a lot of them think that it's because of their race they think it's because of their color and they even apply this to their own black men they're saying that the black men don't want to choose them because they're not light enough for them which I don't agree with, but I do understand where they're coming from and why they would have this thought process. So if the media <laughs> and representation matters, like everyone keeps saying, right? So if representation really matters, we have to be careful about the way that we're portraying people in the media. And if you're crazy promoting this movie where this image of black women is a bunch of angry strong overly aggressive violent women it doesn't matter what the cause is that you're claiming they're fighting for it's the image the image itself that they're ready to fight everybody that's not an image that's healthy for us to be portraying in this country especially with the state of affairs socially that our women are already experiencing now it's already an uphill battle for a lot of black women to be taken seriously to be looked at as feminine <laughs> to be looked at as needing to be protected it's a lot of uphill battles that these women have to go through to get that from society in general and then to have a movie like this where they're misgendering these women calling her a a woman king is very confusing how is she a woman but also a king like that doesn't even make any sense it's confusing i don't like the way that they use like feminism and lgbtq matters and even black racial matters and then they turn it into whatever narrative i feel like spewing at people today it's very dangerous it's really weird and i just don't like that i don't want my daughter going to watch a movie like this and then telling herself oh to be accepted as a black woman that means i need to get more aggressive i need to get more strong i need to be more loud i need to be more manly you don't need to do all of that that's not what anybody is looking for you to do as a black woman that's not what we need <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that's for one and for two the whole slavery narrative of it is shocking to me because I don't understand why. Did you guys know that this movie is not even written by black people? It's written by two white girls. So I'm like, if you're going to write a movie about people who you're trying to empower, shouldn't the movie be written by people who are from that actual culture? <laughs> because they know what their people need to hear. It's they're creating a narrative and then feeding it to these people and saying, this is your history. Here, eat it up. Based on what? You see what I'm saying? They took a, a sliver of some African history and then they're trying to like glorify this. Like everybody should look up to this. Like it's real. Follow this. You know, be inspired by this. And I'm like, that's not accurate. What are y'all doing? Those women that were fighting in that, um, in that army, in the real army, like the real actual place, a lot of those women were slaves themselves. They were captives of slavery themselves. And that particular tribe was known for capturing a bunch of other tribes around them, 
for enslavement. They would go and kidnap people and then take them back to their village. And a portion of those people they would keep there as their servants. And another big portion of those people they would sell into the slave trade. So I don't understand how that's empowering to black people or black women for them to be watching a movie about some historical event. Like they're trying to make it seem like, oh, it's based on a true story. But the real true story that it's based on is a lie. They're not telling you what actually happened. You feel me? A lot of those women were forced into being in, in that um, army because they were captives themselves. And then they were trained from the time they were very young, like 10, 11 years old. They're children. They cannot make decisions at that age. They're not choosing to go join the army. They don't have no choice. And those women were not in a society run by women. They were just part of the army, but the society was run by a man. They had an actual king, not a woman king, a man king, a real king that <laughs> that ran their kingdom. And the king was married legally to every single one of those warrior princesses. And you know who he ended up throwing into the, um, the, the army? The women who he felt were not attractive enough for him to actually sleep with. So... That means these are just the garbage girls. I don't care if they die or live. So you guys can go fight in the wars and beat everybody up and get killed. And then the girls who I think are pretty, they just live here in the in the castle with me and I can sleep with all of them. Like, what? <sighs> Did anybody research this whole thing before they decided to put this movie together? I'm just confused. I'm very confused. It makes no sense. I don't understand why people are all jumping up and down and getting so excited about this movie. Oh, finally, representation. Finally, it's black women. And then when they hear these criticisms, the same people who should be offended by this will say, it's just a movie. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> who cares? What? Make up your mind. Do you want to be represented or do you not? Which one is it? Because when they're representing us poorly we should be saying this is a poor representation of us it's not right you feel me but instead we're just we're just sweeping it under the rug well that's okay it's just a movie it's not just a movie that's why black panther was so powerful wakanda is not a real place y'all it ain't real it's make-believe but it was so empowering to just random black folks here in the united states they're not even africans they're just american black people they felt so connected to that movie. They were walking around, wearing the clothes, being in costume, and representing Wakanda like it was a real place. You feel me? Again, this is why I keep saying it's very, very dangerous to take away a whole history of a, of a people and then act like ain't nothing happened. It's not a big deal. Whatever, just start from scratch. No, that's not how it works. That's not how humanity works. We need to know our history. We need to know where we come from, who we come from. We need to know our cultures. We need to know our grandparents. We need to know who we are because if you don't, things like this just go sliding under the radar and then people don't say anything about it because they don't want to get attacked by the woke crowd who's going to just call you a bunch of names. You're a racist. You're you're too religious. You're too you're this kind of politic that kind of politic and they'll start coming for you if you have an opinion about these things that don't line up with their narratives i don't have no problem with people making media that's going to um, empower our women for real if it's actually empowering but to me cardi b and megan the stallion these girls they're not empowering to black women like that's just stripper culture you feel me that's not black culture and We'll worship them. We'll worship these girls that are twerking on TV with the the She-Hulk. Why does She-Hulk need to be twerking? Like, I don't understand this. On the one hand, we'll say that we want equality. We want to be represented right. We want to be respected. But then when people are doing it sideways, we don't question it. We don't call it out. We don't hold anybody accountable. We just keep trying to brush it under a rug. And it's just mind-boggling to me that people with any level of intelligence thinks that that's okay to do like i just don't understand that you feel me tammy says seventy thousand generations is why we are here today yeah absolutely exactly how did we get here how did we as black folks any folks but specifically i'm talking about black people because our history was systematically removed from us how did we survive this long if our people were weak <laughs> how do we how are me and you <laughs> who identify as black people how are we sitting here and surviving we're not enslaved you feel me if our people had no idea what they was doing you feel me 
I, that doesn't make any sense. And our history goes back further and wider than slavery. I don't understand why every single time they have a massive media representation of us, it's always got something to do with slavery. And I'm like, do you people not understand that we are more than just a bunch of slaves? Like we had so much other stuff going on. They never talk about how Africans were traveling to the Americas before Columbus ever came here. They never talk about that. They don't talk about the boats that had already existed that they were sailing from Africa and the surrounding areas to the Americas regularly, regularly. Hello? The Native Americans told Columbus, oh yeah, some brown-skinned people be coming here. They have spears. They come here on a boat. He told that to them. They told him that. He knew about it. You see what I'm saying? But they don't want us talking about that stuff. How many black folks, raise your hand if you're a black person that knows somebody in your family who's part a Native American. We all know somebody in our family that's Native American. You think that's an accident? But they can't name one family member who can trace their lineage back to a specific part of Africa. That's not an accident. <laughs> that's not an accident, you guys. They be lying to us. You feel me? And this movie is another massive lie. And that's what about it that is just such a peeve under my skin. I don't have a problem with... The actors, I think all the actors that were in that movie are beautiful, and I hope all of them get more acting gigs. It's, to me, more sad that somebody who's a brilliant actor, like, um, um, what's her name? The, the star of the movie? What is her name? <sighs> anyway, her last name is Davis. But the actress who's playing the Woman King, right? Um, I feel like she's such a brilliant actress that it's a sad truth that Viola, yeah, in this day and age that she had to even accept a role like that in order to keep herself working. Like, we should be astounded that that even has to happen in 2022. That's what I'm mad about. You feel me? I feel like it's a it's an injustice and a disservice to our people to be just taking anything they throw at us with black faces on it and then being like, yeah, black power, yeah, that's what's up. No, that's not what's up. That's not what's up. It's disgusting. It's gross. It's nasty. Like, who do these people think they are that they got away with doing this? And then our people are so brainwashed that we'll actually argue with one another when we crit criticize things like this. You feel me? We'll get mad at each other. People will come at me and be like, huh, what's wrong with you? Why can't you just accept the movie for what it is? Oh, that's not really what happened. They weren't really selling selling slaves. Uh, yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> how much denial do you have to be in <laughs> that's what that tribe was known for you feel me it's just sad it's just sad um i and i see why lupita rejected the role because she know better she know damn better anyway i have a friend who is actually african from uh west africa which is the part of the world that this tribe is from but my friend is from um cote d'ivoire which used to be called ivory coast and I haven't had a chance yet to talk to her about it, but I am going to talk to her about it. I'm going to ask her what she thinks about it and how she feels like it's portraying her people and what she feels about the movie. She might disagree with what I'm saying. You know, she has a different perspective and a different experience of blackness as a full um, African person. Granted, she grew up here in the United States, you know, so she has... I feel like she has a partial experience of what it's like for a black American because when people see her, they see a black person in general. But then when they get to know her, when she opens her mouth, she's got a French accent. So it throws them off. You feel me? So she has a different kind of experience than I think the average black person does here. So her, her view might be a little bit different than mine. But I'm just curious to hear what she would have to say about it. And I want to hear her perspective. Maybe her perspective will add to this one that I have. Or maybe it will make me change my mind about some things that I'm saying. But just on face value, just something about that is real sus to me. First of all, you got two young white women writing the script for this story. Like writing the story. Like I, this, I don't know. This, that in itself is just weird. I, it's weird. It would be like... That's weird. That would be like a Chinese person trying to tell you Mexican history. Like, what? Like, what do you get out of even doing this? You know what I mean? Are they professors of black studies someplace that we didn't know about? I don't know. But I find that very suspicious. <laughs> very suspicious. And I also find it even more suspicious that you've got a cast full of dark-skinned black women running around like animals sweating, screaming and yelling at the top of their lungs, fighting all these men, beating everybody up, 
and they're all serving who are they serving i mean i haven't watched the movie yet but it's, it's strange because who are they serving who is putting them up to this this character who they're calling the woman king you guys know is a fictional character right it's not a real person who, they, who that they're depicting with this character so they made her up who are you supposed to be serving running around here like this because in the real tribe they were serving some king who thought he just had it like that to be throwing a bunch of women in in the in the way of all all this violence and turmoil and also marry them and also marry everybody else in his kingdom who he felt like sleeping with and that was just what they was doing so i feel like you know our modern day sisters if they realized that that's what was going on they would be a little bit more up in arms about supporting that and telling themselves that that is a good depiction of us i would just i don't know i feel like a lot of them will feel some kind of, kind of way because like me and my husband have an open relationship and trust me it's 90 percent black women that get have be in a tizzy when they hear that i don't mind sharing my husband with another woman so like if they can't even handle me talking about that in modern day times can you imagine a whole army full of women that are expected to marry the king because <laughs> he said so I don't even got a choice. I don't like him. <laughs> I'm not into him like that. <laughs> I ain't got no choice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That seems strange. I don't know. I feel like brethren, <laughs> sisters, can we please use our critical thinking abilities? Can we activate that real quick and just think before we follow behind people? Because everyone else is doing it. It's strange. This is how people get led into gas chambers. You understand what I'm saying? We need to wake up and smell the coffee up in here because something don't seem right. Um, Janine said, I feel like just from the costume design of the movie, they turn these warriors into caricatures. Shauna said, the reason they keep showing us movies about slavery is to keep on a spiritual level reinforcing the fact that there, this is where our history begins. And yeah, and it's a complete lie. Daylight said, I found out through ancestry that my grandmother has Spanish ancestry on her father's side. I was accused of digging by my uncle because of my research. I ain't even surprised. Um, Michael said, there's actually one Barbie Extra doll looks alike. Lupita, Barbie Extra 1, Chinese people try to, should try to respect others and themselves. And you guys, don't get it twisted too. Because you know on my Korean side, we have a very, very iffy history also with slavery on my Korean side that uh, came from um, some uh, conflicts that we were having with the Japanese at some point. I don't remember exactly when this was in history, but for 50 years, Japan had occupied Korea and had enslaved the people of Korea. And we were enslaved on our own soil, on our own soil, in our own country. And some of those people actually got hauled off to Japan and they were enslaved there on the Japanese island, right? So there's some, you know, there's some funny blood between Koreans and Japanese people that it's not, they don't have a problem with each other on the surface. And Koreans don't dislike Japanese people because they know, like, it's not you, your ancestors did that. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have bad blood with them just overall. It's not like Chinese people and Japanese people are going to start fighting if they're in a room together. It's not like that. But this history exists. And as a Korean person none of my elders would let me not know about it. It wasn't a situation where they were like, it's in the past. <laughs> no, they're like, you need to learn from this. We need to learn about having pride in our our culture. And this is part of the reason why a lot of Koreans and other Asians, they don't really like to mix with other groups when they're having, um, getting married or having children because they don't want to kill their culture. They don't want their culture to get lost because the child doesn't know which culture to follow. And if you don't instill it in the child, then they're just going to lose it, right? So that's part of the reason why they like to keep their people mating with their own people. It's not racism. It's not because they think they're better than everyone else or you're not good enough. It's just because they don't want to lose their culture. They're traumatized because when the Japanese came in and occupied us, the first thing they started doing was destroying literature, all of the history books. They were destroying all kinds of documents. They were burning up books. And the people were being told that they could not speak their language. So Korean written language and the Korean spoken language, you could only indulge in your own language in private if you if the japanese people heard you speaking the language you could get killed so people had to learn japanese <laughs> they couldn't even speak their own language and then does this sound familiar to anyone come on 
um, the children were being turned against the parents. They were telling kids to tell on their parents if they said or things that went against the Japanese re regime. So it was a tumultuous time in our history, but eventually the Koreans ended up banding together and then they fought the Japanese off and they basically kicked them out of the country. And that's how we independence back. And ever since then, Korea has been just on a mission to not really, um, they're kind of isolated, I guess. Now, lately in the past 10 years with the internet, we've opened up a little bit more. But that's part of the reason why the Korean nation itself is just very standoffish when it comes to letting foreigners come in there and mingle with them and change up the way they're doing things and influence their overall culture. You feel me? So I'm just talking about this to say that people think because I'm half black, I don't know anything about black culture or I don't have no interest in black culture and I shouldn't be concerned with black culture, which is so idiotic, so just dangerous for people to be thinking and talking like that. It's scary, you know what I'm saying? But it's not just with my black side. I mean, I have just as much of an interest in my cultures on either side, you feel me? Because you need to know who you are. You need to know who your people are, what struggles they overcame and how they overcame them it empowers that's true empowerment when you know yeah my people we fought we fought for what we knew was right we fought you feel me and we didn't just give in we didn't just go along with it we were still sneaking around teaching our children our language we were still sneaking around making sure that the korean um alphabet system didn't just die you know what i mean 50 years of slavery doesn't sound like a lot but that's a whole generation a lot can get lost in one generation seriously so you know, if you think about it, if you think back to how long ago um, slavery and segregation was here in the United States, it wasn't really that long ago. There's people walking around right now that are alive right now that remember those times. You feel me? So we can't look at it like, oh, so long ago. No, 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 no. This stuff be affecting the next generation, the next generation. We're all affected by these things. And as a country, America should be concerned. Not if you, Even if you're not a black person, if you are an American, you should be concerned with how these things are portrayed by our media because it sends a message to people, not only the people who it's depicting, but it, it sends a message to other people. For example, right? Well, who cares that all these women are a bunch of strong warrior chicks? Who cares? We know what it is. Yeah, but over in Australia, they don't know what it is. Over in Europe, they don't know what it is. So well, now when they see a dark-skinned, tall black woman walking down the street, they just looking at her like, yeah, she could probably fight. She don't need no protection. If somebody run up on her and do something to her, mug her, do something violating to her, no one's going to just jump to her defense because she's a big, strong black woman that don't need nobody's help. Things like this happen all the time, you guys, all the time. And that's not the image we should be depicting of ourselves you feel me if a you know we always go into a tizzy about like i'm really into true crime and i hear so many people complaining about how when little blonde blue-eyed white girls go missing not even little grown women with whole husbands and kids when they go missing there's like a whole media onslaught of coverage until she's found like G gabby petito's case right but then if a black girl goes missing even if she's just a teenager Ain't nobody looking for her. Nobody cares. Nobody's got her face all over the news. It's just, eh, whatever. She she probably ran away. She probably went to a party. Like, it's always some way to just explain it away where it's not that big of a deal. And people get upset about this because a lot of the, the, the cases that get solved are the ones that get circulated, are the ones that have coverage that people are aware of, right? So this is why it's a big deal, how we get portrayed in the media. That's why it's not just a movie. That's why we need to be paying more attention to these things and calling it out when we see that this don't add up. This is not helping our narrative any because when your sister, black people, get, goes missing, you're not going to want people looking at her like some strong, dark-skinned warrior woman who don't need nobody's help. Uh, whoever kidnapped her, she could probably fight him off. What the hell? <laughs> what in the hell? That's crazy. That is crazy. But it happens all the time. The cops will just laugh in a person's face sometimes and be like, she's not really missing. She probably went off on a drug binge someplace. <laughs> like, they'll just dismiss you. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. This, this is, you know, Shauna said comfort women. Yeah, comfort women. That was their code word for basically the 
the wench, basically, the woman who the men are having sex with just to relieve themselves. And then they're like, they're not being taken care of. These women are not being married. They're not being cared for. They're not being provided for. They're just there for sex. And then that's it. And she has no say in it. You know what I'm saying? That It is what it is. These, these are truths. This really happens. And even to this day, people are human trafficked right now. Slavery still exists right now. And people are kidnapped all the time and put into these situations and they don't know how to get out of it. They don't know how to ask for help. People don't know how to see the warning signs when they run into people who are in these situations. They just, there's no, no, there's nobody talking about this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't mean to go off on a tangent and rant you guys, but I just, I just needed to get this off my chest because I feel like my audience here, you guys are more thoughtful people than the average internet audience. And I have a mixture of people here of all different races, all different religions, all different political views, all different genders, all different gender identities, a whole mixture of people that hang out over here and that are part of the dull um, world. Not everybody is going to agree with what I'm saying here and not every black person is going to even see things the way that I'm explaining here, but I don't think that has more to do with whether or not you're black i think that has a lot more to do with denial because <laughs> a lot of black folks just don't want to believe that they're at a disadvantage when it comes to certain things they just don't want to believe it so they'll attack you if you point it out you feel me they'll just say oh you're hating oh you just can't stand the fact that this dark-skinned woman is a lead role in a movie no i celebrate her being a lead role in any movie i'm a fan of that show that she's on um what is it called? How to Get Away with Murder? I mean, her character is very complex. And there's a lot of things about that character I don't like. But I like the show. I like that she's the character that she's playing. Because I think she's doing a good job of playing that character. And there's a bunch of other black women that are leads in shows that I support. Like, um, who is that? Carrie Washington? Is that her name? When she was playing in S Scandal? Is that what it was called? Um, Adonis was like a big fan of that show So he used to watch it all the time And I would watch it with him And I loved how brilliant and intelligent that character was Even though some of the shenanigans they were getting into on that show Was like, whoa, okay, hold on I'm covering up murders now But, but, that's not the point The point is, I enjoyed the show I enjoyed the character And I had no problem watching a female black lead You understand what I'm saying? But they weren't portraying that character Like she was overly extra, extra strong Beating up, fighting everybody that's not what was going on. She was still a feminine woman with relationships and a career. And she was balancing them. She just happened to pick a strange career where a lot of wild things are happening. You feel me? So, you know, I'm totally okay with people dramatizing and putting all this crazy stuff out there. And even, like I said, about the whole Wakanda thing. Yeah, that's empowering. Let's just remember, it's not real. But it's empowering. You feel me? So... If they were going more down that route, I would totally be able to support this movie. But just the message that it sends, I think, is is more dangerous than helpful. And if we're not careful, they will keep wrapping up dangerous messages in this format. They will shroud it with empowerment, Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ Lives Matter, you know, whatever wokey woke stuff they like to just shove down your throat. And then you're like really looking at it and you're like this i don't understand how this is helpful how 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 is teaching our daughters to twerk on stripper poles empowering i don't get it <laughs> i don't get it <laughs> you're slut shaming oh no you can be a slut i'm not saying anything about you being a slut but you don't need to announce it to everybody you understand what i'm saying like what do you need to do that for i don't understand do you go do what you want to do as a grown person consenting with other grown people you could do whatever you want but you don't need to announce what you're doing by coming out the house with no clothes on <laughs> and randomly twerking in the office she hulk we don't need to do that like that's not necessary you see what i'm saying like i don't understand this we really gotta check this stuff you guys and young people like janine here you guys really are the future and that's who this stuff is marketed towards because the older people who have a little bit more knowledge on history and uh, psychology and relationships, we're going to question these things a little bit more. And because we're older and our lives are kind of settled in already and we have found our stability, even when things don't fly, we're not always going to 
really be bothered with trying to do or say anything about it because we're living our lives. But you younger people, you know, people in their 20s and younger who are still shaping their lives and still trying to figure out where they're trying to go, be careful about the kinds of things that you're consuming in the media and believing. You feel me? I feel like watch the movie just for the fun of it. If you want to go watch this movie just because it seems like a fun movie to watch, go go do it. But don't watch it because you're sitting there trying to educate yourself or because you want your daughters to feel empowered and we're going to make this a family thing. Like, that's corny. Don't do that because you're lying. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to your kids and it's misleading. <laughs> And that's not going to help them in the long run when they're 45 years old and can't figure out how to get a husband because she too busy trying to be like She-Hulk. She too busy trying to be like these woman king warriors. And she's repelling all the men around her who are like, she's not that feminine. <laughs> I think I'm going to pass on this one. You feel me? No, 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 no. You're going to be taking care of your daughter for the rest of her life. She's going to be living on your couch. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's just for fun. You feel me? And I wish they would have marketed it like that. And I hate when they try to add all these weird messages to everything. It's just for fun. Why can't they just market it that way? It's just fun. Don't read into it, right? Um, Y'all see how these white folks feel about the new Little Mermaid? Yeah, I don't understand that either because I haven't seen the trailer yet. I'm going to watch the trailer. But <laughs> the reason why the Little Mermaid thing throws me off is because <clears throat> it's not real. The Little Mermaid is not real. <laughs> She's not real. You feel me? It's a mermaid. It's a it's a make believe character. It's like a fairy. Like there's no rules to this. You feel me? It's like saying, "Oh, vampire can't be black." Why? Says who? That's weird to me. That I don't understand that. So that's strange. And like, um, did you guys ever hear about? I, I I don't know what the name of this island is called. I wish I remembered it. But there's an island in Africa where people rumor that there's actual mermaids in that in the waters there and they be saying that they see them but they they're not girls they say that they look like men right wait a minute the big deal is not that she's black i guarantee you the bigger deal is going to be that she wants to be with another woman wait the, so she's gay too the, the, the <laughs> no listen to listen to what i'm saying that is the, <sighs> that, that's the real thing Mm -hmm. Just as she's black, that's the smoke signal. That's the smoke screen. Mm -hmm. The smoke screen is that she's black. Because mm. she's not even supposed to be going out of the water and getting legs and, and getting with a guy or whatever. She's not looking to find a prince. She's probably going to be, because like in a Buzz Lightyear movie, um, the black girl... Uh, first of all, there was no black man in the Buzz Lightyear movie. And, yeah. Oh, and, Galaxy, have a good night. I forget that it's later on the other coast than it is over here. The, the the black girl in the Buzz Lightyear movie, she mm -hmm. was she was gay and she was with with, with a white woman or a Spanish <laughs> woman or something like that. I don't know what all the problem. I I saw somebody. Who, I think I dolled it um for you on her Instagram. I think I saw a post where she had. Listen, put, listen. It's not that she's gay. It's that what are you? This is Disney. What are you telling my kids about? Like, but they already did that, and they were already flipping out about it. But but they're continuing it. They're not gonna stop. That's the whole problem. The fact that she's black is just that's that's the diversion from yeah. when you actually see the movie and you're like, wait, so this kids movie is telling everybody that what's her name in Little Mermaid Ariel <laughs> is now gay. Now I gotta see the trailer because I I want to see what everybody's flipping out about. So Trees put up a post on her Instagram where she was saying, um, where she showed like a caption of someone saying, now ginger girls are gonna grow up and not be able to have an image of themselves because. They took that away because the Little Mermaid is no longer this ginger white girl, right? I'm just, but I'm laughing because I'm like, bro, bro. That would be like saying blonde hair, blue eyed girls are not going to see themselves in Tinkerbell if we make Tinkerbell Mexican. Like, it's a fairy. It's not a real person. Are you, is your daughter trying to grow up to become a fairy? Is she trying to grow up to become a mermaid? Like, if she thinks she's going to grow up to become a, a, a fairy, a mermaid, or a princess, you need to do more mothering because that's crazy. You feel me? <laughs> this is a delusional world that your daughter is living in. It don't matter what color hair the character has, what kind of freckles she got or don't got, what skin tone she got. It don't matter because it's not real. It's just make-believe. It's for fun. You see what I'm saying? You know, they use black people to push a lot of stuff because we're very influential. Like, for example... Boring blue-eyed Barbie, you know. I remember when the Sistals came out, 
and, and sister dolls was wearing like rockwear clothes and stuff like that. Yeah. Like I remember not even being in the dolls and knowing how big that was. That Barbie did you did you see them in. back then? I, I, I saw them everywhere. Mm. Um, the baby fat um dolls and that you know that was that was like and there wasn't a wow, lot of you advertising. Remember that? Yeah, that was only in two thousand nine. There wasn't a lot okay. of advertising for that. But I remember as not even, like, I don't think I knew you then, 2005, 6, 7. Yeah, we were not together then. Um, but I remember those was like something, they were like very, very big. And this is a father of two girls at that time. So, of course, it's going to stand out to him because he's like, oh, shoot, them, them dolls look kind of like my daughter's Not look. only was, was it Rockefeller and Rockaware and Baby Fat and these hip-hop types of clothing, it was hip-hop clothes. Mm -hmm. It was black people, and it was on dolls. That was very, very big. But all they did was just take the cis doll away and turn it into the fashionistas. Mm. You know? So they tested that they tested the fat. Huh. You know what I mean? I they, see what you're saying. Yeah, I get you know what it. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm wording it correctly. No, but I get what you're saying. They, 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 they were like, Barbie is failing. Nobody is buying this. So let's inject this new energy of hip hop and rap and yeah. Let's get live and get hip with it. <laughs> and then, you know, the cis was like very, very big within the, uh, the hip hop community. And then they got rid of it. And then a few years later, then the fashionistas came out. And the fashionistas actually boosted the sales of Barbie. And then the doll evolves. That ain't nothing but a black woman's body. <laughs> that ain't nothing but the black woman's body. Uh, the doll evolves. She's not fat. That's a regular black girl's she's, body. She said she's not fat. Fat. That's the regular black girl's body. Barbie on the West Coast said, hello, love, my first live. Welcome to the live. Yeah, we just be chatting over here. Like the first part of the video, if you decide you want to go back and watch the beginning, I showed everybody what I did um, with this doll's hair that I ended up rerouting. But my homegirl Janine over here gave me a really good idea to not do a full reroute. And she suggested that I that I glue in half of the hair and then only root the front so that it looks like it's all rooted in and I can still style the hair. So that's what we did. And it turned out really good. And let me just lift this part for the people who missed it. But yeah, see this part here, it's glued. I only use regular school glue, Elmer school glue. And I just glued in wefts of hair that I cut off of another doll's head. So I didn't even go and get like new hair for this. I just used recycled hair and then the front part all along the hairline itself and here in the middle part where the hair was rooted before because this doll her original hair comes like this so I just you know took all this hair out and then this space that had hair rooted in it I just added my own hair there my technique that I used is not a technique that I even recommend to other people because to me it's painstaking and I don't like it and that's why I don't like to root and I need to get like a different kind of tool to use because um, I feel like that will be a lot easier and faster to root. Me, I like my favorite way to root hair is the reborn doll method, which is basically using a felting needle and pushing the hair strands in um, to the scalp. To me, it's the fastest way to do it. And then if you really need to seal it, which you really don't have to seal, seal it, the hair will stay put even if you brush it for the most part but if you just want to be safe and seal it you can with like a little layer of whatever kind of adhesive you like to use if you if you have a glue that you trust that you like you can just pour it onto the inside of the doll's head or use a paintbrush and just lightly go over it and then let it dry overnight and it should be fine but I don't really even we need to do that with the dolls that I have in my collection because I'm not going to be manhandling them where the hair is just going to pop out if I brush it too hard or something so that's just my own preference for how to root but I don't have a rooting tool around right now so I have to do it like the old school needle way and that method just to me is just so painstaking but the way that I did it let's just pretend that this is the needle I just this is the end of the needle so you put the hair through here and then um on one end of the hair I had a little teeny tiny like amount of glue so that it would seal the hair follicles together and then I just, okay, and then I just put it into the hole this way and push it through. And then when you pull, it's going to pull that knot down, right? So after that, I'll unhook the um, the needle from the, the hair strand. And then I just pull the rest of the hair out over this way. And then the hair will lay down. 
and there's a knot on the inside that's keeping the hair from coming out. I know that sounds kind of complex, but it's really not. It's very, very simple. And it didn't take me that long to do it. And then doing it in this method allows me to part her hair in whatever direction I want to part it in. I know it's like a side part here right now, but that's because I molded it that way. It's not really a permanent part. She has no part in her hair at the moment. So I can literally part it whichever direction I want. And then because I did the edges, I can tie her hair up. I can do kind of really almost any hairstyle and it's going to just blend. And then the way that I glued the hair on the back, let me just see if I can focus it more because my camera doesn't like to pick up on things in front of it if there's faces in the background but see how you can't really tell you can't see where the glue is the way that I did it is because this first layer of hair on the bottom I didn't glue it right at the edge I glued it kind of up a little bit so that way I can flip the hair upside down and you're not going to be able to see anything. So she's got a lot of um, choices for how we can style her hair. And I think it's a very low maintenance method. It didn't take me that long to do. Maybe like two hours. Maybe. But I mean some of my uh, customizers in here are talking about six plus hours of rooting that they're doing for a whole head of hair. And I ain't got time for that. So... <laughs> I needed a different solution, so thank goodness <laughs> that Janine and her brilliant brain came up with this idea, and she was like, won't you just try it like this? I like how matter-of-fact you said it, because it's not that matter-of-fact, but, uh, okay. Let's see. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any comments. Um, Blake said, it doesn't even matter what race you are or where you come from. Right is right. There is no two ways about it. Yeah, exactly. Um... Um, Barbie said, Barbie on the West Coast, I have not been able to find a good rooting tool. Any suggestions? Yeah, so if you guys have suggestions for her, then definitely leave it in the comments section. But, like I said, I just like the felting needle method because it's fast and very low maintenance. Um, I think you can buy those on Amazon for a dirt cheap price. I've seen them listed on Amazon as low as $7. And... If you don't know how to use them, just watch some tutorials on YouTube of how reborn doll artists use felting needles to root doll hair. And then you'll know exactly what you need to do. But it's very, very simple. You just poke the hair into the head. And if the doll already has holes in the head, that might actually make it a little bit easier because you know where to put the... the but the reason why I like the needle method is because, or I mean the felting needle, is because you can do it from the outside going in. And this is the direction that I like to root. I don't want to go from the inside coming out. Especially if I have holes already in the doll's head because I'm not making a new hole. I'm trying to get it into existing holes. And it's too stressful. It's just too much. Especially here around the hairline. So for me, it's easier to just go this way because I know exactly where I need to direct the hair. But that's just me. Everybody's got their um, their way that they like doing it. Um, Tammy said, "I found that a large sewing to a a large sewing a sewing needle does a great job." Um, yeah, mine is like super long. My sewing needle that I'm using is longer than this toothpick. <laughs> uh, I hate the way the actual movie looks. The trailer has this weird bluish gray tint to it. Really dreary for no good reason. Um, Michael said, I'm one of the LGBTQ people, but I think it's just way too much of LGBTQ fights and sexual image. It's just don't have to be so many confrontations. Um, yeah, and this is, you know what, the, you know what about that really irks me is because there is people who belong to the black race, to LGBTQ community, to polyamorous communities, to actual like you know the whole me too movement there's really women who were violated for real right and these people have no voice they have to fight for their voice to be heard and then you got these wokeity woke folks who like to come through and hijack the movement so that they can get attention on themselves and have everybody just standing behind whatever they're trying to push on society and i don't understand why they're allowed to just do that like it's so unfair because the people who really, really need that voice are not even being heard. It's just very, ugh, just why? You know what I mean? So that's what really bothers me about that whole thing. Like, it's just, I don't understand it. It's so annoying. Um, 
Crossing Seasons is but red hair jean is the hair color. So technically you're still getting represented. And if we are being for real, Ariel's hair is an unrealistic red color. It's not even natural. I know, there ain't no redheads with hair that bright red. Come on, give me a break. That's why I'm just laughing because I'm like, don't do that. Don't try to act like they're they're culturally appropriating because they turn the Little Mermaid into a brown girl. Like, that's not how that works. What are you talking about? That's not red-haired people culture to be swimming in, in, in oceans and pretending to be mermaids. That's not their thing. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's make-believe. You know what I mean? It can be whatever you want it to be. Like, they can turn the Little Mermaid into a boy for all I care. That would be crazy if a bunch of women started flipping out because a Little Mermaid was turned into a boy. He can't be a, a boy mermaid? Like, what? what <laughs> you know what i'm saying relax it's not that serious that's not that serious <laughs> that is just a movie but other stuff i'm like don't try to push everything into the that's just a movie category where it's not appropriate you know you gotta know where to draw the line um let me see here we got another comment we should pull our money and build a movie studio wouldn't that be awesome mattel should think about letting us custom hair reroute because rooting hair is way too sleepy. <laughs> um, to me, I mean, they must got a machine. Yeah, they got tons of machines. Deep bricks it. What did I miss? Not that much. Um, hair rooting machine. Wouldn't that be sick if they had like a portable hair rooting machine that you could buy? And then they sold you the hair separately. And you could just stick your doll's head in there and it'll just rotate the head while it duh, 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 and you just load it with the hair. What? Like, oh my gosh, so many people would buy something like that. Does that exist? That would be dope. Deep Bricks Head. I just did a reroute a few days ago. Yeah, well, that's kind of what we were talking about rooting hair. And me, I'm so lazy, so I don't have the patience to do it. So I did a partial reroute and then the rest of the hair is glued in. But you can't really tell that it's glued in because it's. It moves, and I did it so that you you cover up the part that's glued with the hair that's rooted. Also, I'm really excited to try to do different hairstyles with her because I really feel like I could get away with doing some updos, and I just want to see what we can do and take pictures from different angles and see how much of it is showing and, like, kind of run a brush through her hair a couple of times to see if any of it's falling out or shedding on me and how much of it is falling out and shedding you know is it like a crazy amount and it's like three weeks from now she's gonna be bald or <laughs> a couple of strands here and there in which case as long as i don't manhandle her she should be okay for a little while i do have another doll that i kind of did this with but i didn't at the time because i didn't have this grand idea um to to root part of the hair so she doesn't have her hair line rooted it's all glued and is it this one? Are you the one? Oh, she's the one. Wow, I picked her out real quick. Okay. So she used to be Katniss from, I want to say, wave one. But, uh, is it, am I bugging you guys? Doesn't this doll have a goddess sculpt? She didn't get her own head sculpt until later, right? So, yeah. But her actual hair that she had in her head at the time, I didn't like because it was, like, uneven, like, the front part of her hair was shorter than the rest of her hair. And it was just awkward when I was trying to style it. I just literally pulled her out of a drawer. So her hair is a hot mess. But I did the exact same thing with this doll where I just glued this hair onto her head. And the front part of it, I can't really tell because her hair is just down. It's not really styled. But see this this little oh shoot you see this little part right here oh you know what okay you're gonna have to turn around lo siento because my dolls oops faces distracts the camera and then it doesn't want to it doesn't want to um focus but see you can kind of see the the particles of the glue after it dried see how it's kind of like white uh almost like dust in her hair and that's unsightly that's not a good look you know it's not that noticeable when she's dressed and she's just standing still like you can't really tell from a distance but up close you can definitely tell and that's i didn't want to 
end up with this kind of a look which is why I didn't I, w I was trying to not glue hair in on my doll even though I knew that it would stay put you know the hair the hair is like it's in there it's dry this doll I did this doll a few years ago you guys not even a few years I'm, I'm lying it's more than a few years my daughter is 10 I think I did this damn this doll is super old bro oh my gosh how long have I had this doll my daughter is 10 and I had this doll and my mom accidentally gave me this doll <laughs> oh lord that's a story for another day my mom is so strange anyway so when i got this doll i want to say my daughter was like a year old she was a baby dang that's a long time that i've had this doll but the hair is is in there it hasn't been coming out so you know it's it's long lasting because that one lasted for years and i only use elmer glue for her too so, but the only change we made here is to actually root the hair on the hairline. So that way you don't have to worry about patches like that where there's just glue hanging out right where you can see. So that's what I tried to do. I tried to think of like what parts of the hair would be visible if I parted it this way or that way. And then that's the parts that we rooted. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I didn't miss a good comment. Shauna said, I think the YouTube page is called Super Buddies Forever. And she uses clear waterproof caulk as the glue for her flocking technique. Clear waterproof. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Two black women in my church had Ariel red hair. No, it wasn't their natural hair color, but they looked good. It worked for them, as Daylight saying that. Um, Michael said maybe a magnetic switch wig. Oh, magnetic. That's a good idea. Deep Brick said, I see it. And Michael said, we can switch the hairstyle. Yeah, you can switch the hairstyle if you had like a magnetic wig. Doesn't that exist? That's a thing, right? But with like ball jointed dolls, I think. Uh, do you and your daughter have any of the same dolls in your collection? That's a good question, which I can very easily answer. Daylight said, do 10 plugs a day <laughs> keep rerouting from being boring i've been rerouting one for months doesn't take that long but i'm in no hurry that's the thing i'm so impatient like i don't want to wait forever like i feel like like you know how long i've had this doll and just not done anything with her since i like bought her like since this wave came out i've had this doll and i just have her like stuck in a corner someplace where she's out on display but I don't really handle her and I don't put her on my main display taking up a slot because she just doesn't look the way that I want her to look with her hair like this. Just something about this look just does not fit her to me. But now that I've changed her hairstyle, now I'm looking forward to actually trying on different um, outfits on her and giving her like an actual look that's her look and putting her on display so she can join the rest of my main dolls in my display shelf. And I'll have to take a picture when I get finished installing these um, acrylic shelves because they're very easy to install. I shouldn't even say they're very easy. They're very easy to install if you know what you're doing, okay? But I have to do everything freaking the hard way because I'm crazy. So the ones up there that I have, I'm trying to put another set on this wall, right? And all I'm going to use is literally just a screwdriver. Like, that's all you really need. But the nails are on the back part that's attached to the actual wall. So, your screwdriver can't be... It can't be too... Like, it can't take up too much space. I have to use, like, a short one. Because it'll it'll come up against this part here. That's, like, like a tiny little fence going in the front here. Um... You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm explaining this good. <laughs> but it'll get blocked so you can't, you don't have room to turn it. You feel me? So you have to have like a shorter um, tool to work with so that you can maneuver it. But I do have one here. So I'm going to use that to install it. But I literally installed that by hand. So if you have actual tools or if your husband, unlike mine's, <laughs> <laughs> is handy <laughs> and can help you to install it well then you'll get it in even faster they already come with the tools that you need to install it so i just need to go and find my screwdriver 
Dipsy, do you have a Mercari account? I think I do have a Mercari account because I literally just made one like a week ago. But I don't never be on it. <laughs> I don't really know how it works. <laughs> I might have like one or two things listed there. I think I only listed doll stuff there because I don't really have anything else that I want to list other than doll stuff. But I don't think Merc Mercari is a site specifically for people who are looking for stuff like that. So I already know it's kind of like it's going to take forever for people to even see any of my listings. So I don't know how it works. But I do have one. What did I call it? I don't even know what it's called. Ugh, what's wrong with me? I gotta look it up. <laughs> it's all good. I'll figure it out. One of these days, I'm gonna get it together, you guys. I, I promise you. One of these days, I is gonna get it together. You gonna see. You gonna be like, ooh, this the day when Gypsy done got it together. You are gonna know the difference, okay? Y'all is gonna know. You gonna tell me. You gonna be in my comments saying, Gypsy go for you you finally got it together i'm so proud of you and we're all gonna know what you're talking about because you'll remember that i said this one of these days i'm gonna get it together and y'all's gonna know y'all's gonna figure it out before even i do you feel me that's what i'm looking forward to people <laughs> oh you saw a brooklyn that looks like my doll it probably is my brooklyn then because i'm i think i listed her on I can't remember if I listed her on there or on eBay because I just wanted to see like if it was going to have any views and I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep her or get rid of her. So I think I might have listed her on there along with, I want to I, I wanna say I had listed like a whole batch of stuff over there, but I don't know how long those listings stay active because I don't check on them. Um, so yeah, so it probably was. I wouldn't be surprised. If she was wearing a silver shirt, then it was definitely my Brooklyn. Um, yeah, so you got an account over there? Oh, can we, like, friend each other on there or something? I don't know how that works. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but I'm going to figure it out one of these days, okay? Uh, okay, so it's 10 o'clock over here, so I guess I'm going to have to wrap this up, even though I love hanging out with you guys and chatting with you guys and reading all your cool comments and one person asked me a question i need to answer deep brick said do you and your daughter have any of the same dolls in your collection the answer is no the reason why the answer is no is because we don't actually collect the same types of dolls my daughter collects those nana not surprise dolls and she collects a ton of squishmallows and i don't know if squishmallows count as dolls but to her they do so she treats them like they're dolls so her whole room is like flooded with those kinds of dolls and they're taking up too much space. She has one Barbie that I customized for her, which she doesn't even do anything with. So I don't know why she wanted me to customize this doll. But you know Six from Little Nightmares, that character? She's like obsessed with that character. So she was like, I need a Six doll, mom. So I was like, okay. So I ended up taking a Cho Chang doll from harry potter and i customized her to and like repainted her face and made her look like six i found her like a little yellow raincoat to wear so she could look like a six running around her yellow jacket that's the closest i could come up with for the raincoat i mean for the jacket but whatever my daughter's like 10 so she don't know the difference it's close enough that's the only barbie that she actually owns that's her doll that's in her collection and I want to say one other doll that she has, which is a made-to-move Barbie with uh, the lavender top one. She's like a real dark skin one with the high ponytail and like the copper-colored hair. And she's got purple flowers on her yoga pants. And I have like a bunch of those um, body donors. So I gave her one, but she wasn't really playing with her. So I took her back. <laughs> I was like, yeah, your doll is struggling over here, so I'm gonna just readopt her so that she's not neglected. And when you wanna visit, then you have visitation rights, but I can't guarantee that her head will still be on this body when you wanna visit her. So just letting you know. And she didn't she didn't she did not object. So I I'm going to take that as a I don't give a damn. That's what I'm just I'm just going to assume she don't care. So I took that doll back. But her sixth doll lives on her shelf in her room. And she just has it on display in her room. So that's the only Barbie that my daughter actually owns that she likes. 
And I have no interest whatsoever in that doll or its face sculpt. So she's got like a, I don't know. I just, I don't really like that doll that much. So I had no reason to like buy one to have in my own collection just to have that face. I'm good with that. Yeah, so that's the only doll that my doll daughter has that's even similar to anything that I have. And, um, I don't think we have anything else that's, like, a overlapping type of dolls that we both own and like. I just don't. She also likes reborn dolls, but... Hmm, does she have any? Right now, she doesn't have any. But when I get more baby dolls, I'll probably let her keep some of my older baby dolls. <clears throat> because the ones that I own right now, they're just Ashton Drake dolls. And those dolls are not really reborn dolls, even though they look like them. So, to me, they're more like a playline version of a reborn doll. So, I don't mind passing them down to her if she likes them. But she does like those dolls. She just doesn't play with them that much she's not really a uh, playing with a doll kind of a kid i don't know she likes them but she just likes what she likes so that's why the answer is no we don't have the same kinds of dolls um she actually thinks barbies are kind of creepy and she says they're always looking at her and she doesn't like dolls that look at her <laughs> uh, she likes those dolls where like if you lay them down their eyes close because she's afraid of them at night if she sees their wide eyes staring at her in the, in the nighttime so she'll like if she has dolls in her room she'll cover their faces up with a towel or something at night she don't like looking at them but i'm the opposite even as a kid i wanted my dolls to come to life i would be just staring at them in the dark hoping that they would blink hoping that they would move i'd be like did you say something did, did you say something hi did you say something say something and i would just be waiting for them to say something and they never would in my mind they did but they wouldn't in real life and i was so disappointed i was like what kind of friend are you you don't even talk back to me ill <laughs> oh poor dollies that's okay i know i sound crazy deep brick said hey fellow west coaster you know what i feel like i'm a west coaster but i'm also an east coaster because I'm originally from the West Coast and that I was born in this state, in Washington State. I was born here. But my father, who's from North Philadelphia, moved myself and my mother directly after I was born, like two months after I was born, to the East Coast. So I spent some time on the East Coast. Then I went to Korea, my mother's homeland, and kind of grew up there until I was in maybe like third-ish grade. Then we came back to the East Coast, where my father is from. And then from that point on, all of my experience in America has been on the East Coast. Not all in Pennsylvania, of course. I traveled from different states around that area. And also before we moved here, we lived down south. But ironically, my mother's family, who was in Korea, when they started to immigrate to the United States, because they were familiar with Washington State being my birth state, they just automatically settled here because they thought yeah we're gonna see them when we go to america let's go somewhere they're familiar with let's go to washington where gypsy was born huh. but little did these korean people know that america is jimungus and maybe the map doesn't really give a good scope of how big our country is but they did not realize that this end of the country is like a world away from the other end so for like 20 years my family my korean family has been like slowly immigrating to the united states and they all settled over here and all that time me and my sister were growing up on the east coast so we never got to see them but we would just keep in touch with them so all this time we've been living in america they've been living in america but we just never got to see each other and then recently just before my grandmother died like a couple of years ago we came out here to visit them and my husband just fell in love. He was like, oh my God, this is where we need to be at. Oh my God, we can never go back to the East Coast. And I was like, I don't know. It'd be raining a lot. And there's a lot of traffic. Ugh. And worms. I don't like worms. So I was like, I don't know. And then my aunt convinced me to just come out here. I'm glad that I did, though, because I do realize this is where I belong. I'm definitely a West Coast person at heart. I never felt like I fit in when I was on the East Coast. It's so grungy and dingy and dirty and grimy and just dirty. 
and the people on the east coast you gotta find like pockets of places where the people are sane and friendly because a lot of people on the east coast are afraid of other people because there's a lot of crazy people over there so it's hard to make new friends when you're an adult over on the east coast and even though it's very diverse on the east coast my experience is that even though we're used to seeing people from different nationalities we don't actually mingle with one another we don't mix with each other as much we just kind of stick to ourselves so i don't i don't i don't really like that but here on the west coast it's the complete opposite there are people here that are from just so many different places all kinds of diversity here i, I think on the east coast is more hispanic diversity that i see and over here it's more asian diversity but we do still have all these other races and everyone is so friendly everyone is so welcoming everyone is so just embracing of everyone else without this need to assimilate into a specific culture and everyone is very open-minded over here i love that i love that it's like that here even like like i was saying earlier like i'm in an open relationship when i was on the east coast i have to explain myself to any and everybody who would run into us that would hear about our open relationship but over here that's not really the case. I I be I like brace myself for people to be like, you're in a what? What the hell? But when I tell them, or when they find out, they're just like, oh, okay. I know some people who are in open relationships. <laughs> or they'll be like, oh, you're polyamorous. Like, they know more about it than I even do. So I'm like, oh, okay. They'll, they'll explain it to me. And I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I, I guess it's not a big deal. Whatever. <laughs> you know? So I feel like the people here are a lot more open-minded and culturally so diverse and they have no problem mixing with other cultures and everyone's just relaxed and laid back about their differences. We don't really focus on differences. We focus on what we have in common over here and then we respect the things about other people that are different from ourselves. So yeah, at heart, I really do feel like I'm, I'm definitely where I was supposed to be at. Um, Daylight said, that's funny. My granddaughter was afraid of dolls whose eyes close. Half my family is in Washington State. The other half is in D.C. metro area. Oh, one Washington to the other Washington, huh? Um, that's Mama's Pearl saying that. I have an uncle. Well, he's no longer with us. But when he was, he used to work in Washington, D.C. So I spent a lot of time over there. Because um, that was like my favorite uncle. He was my best friend. So I would always be trying to find ways to hang out with him and be around him tammy said i always believe that my barbie can communicate right i think they really can i think they secretly can and one of these days scientists are gonna like come out with a study in like 45 years they're gonna be like guys did you know <laughs> we just figured this out but did you know that barbie dolls are alive did you know that fashion dolls and baby dolls they have consciousness <laughs> we thought those collectors were crazy <laughs> <laughs> we thought those kids were nuts who are you talking to i'm just talking to my barbie <laughs> okay sally if you say so michael said i'm only afraid of the 2015 millie school they're everywhere i know right they're watching us <laughs> they're they're reporting all of our uh conversations back to the united states government is what they're doing that's how that's why they always know what you're thinking about on your um your cell phone, you know, you just open up Google and they'll be like, hey, did you want to buy some Jordan sneakers today? Jordan Retro 1 specifically? And you're like, how the hell did my phone know that I was thinking about buying these damn Jordans? Well, that's because your dolls are listening to you and the Millie Sculpt is definitely listening to you. They told on themselves with that Hello Barbie house, remember? They, they try to play it off like, oh, hackers, I uh, know. <laughs> nice try Mattel we already we already know what you're up to over there y'all put spyware in that stuff and y'all got caught that's what happened so that's what I think I think Millie is just spying on everybody that's why there's so many of her because there's no way you don't have at least one in your house even I do and I don't even like Millie so <laughs> that's how they listen to our conversations and then they go running back telling on us and then before you know it all of these capitalist people on their commercials they know exactly what to send to your specific devices and that's how you see them ads on your phone right doesn't it make sense you guys just blame mattel you can never lose when you blame mattel okay i hope carlisle doesn't see this one day and be like what is her problem with mattel these guys are my bosses <laughs> i thought she liked me i do i do i love you carlisle but I got a bone to pick with your bosses, okay? Anyways, all right, we got to go, you guys. We're having too much fun, and too much fun is not allowed. 
all right? You cannot have too much fun unless it's planned because we're adults and that's what they say. You have to be adulting 24 hours a day and trying to make money and money, 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 and that's just life, all right? So we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for hanging out with us. Didn't mean for this to be so long, but we'll talk about some more stuff later and uh you guys who i need to hit up on instagram i'll be sure to do that if you don't hear from me in the next 48 hours then you guys stop me okay all right thank you everybody for joining us and ooh, and we'll see you again my name's gypsy and if you're not already subscribed well i don't know what you're waiting for we'll see you in the next one have a dolly day or night wherever you're at